Whoa! <laughs> Alright, so... Kwento mo na tayo! So, uh, so, well, the episode started out with um, Fushi feeling sorry for himself. Um, it's, it's probably the first time he's feeling pit, self-pity, um, low self-esteem. Lot ng klase negative emotions, right? After um, uh, experiencing the death of someone close to him. Yeah, okay. First time niya na experience sa kanya, siguro overwhelming, okay? Overwhelming sa kanya. Then, well, uh, a sheer twist of fate, or so it seems, okay? Him and Pioran meet up again. So, nag-design na pala si Piora na samahan siya. They got scammed uh, onto, a, uh, onto a boat ride where they're supposed to go to this, um, uh, what you call this, this other island they're planning to, to go to. Yung pala, they were scammed into, into riding a prison ship. Alright, headed for Jananda. Uh, Kung maga... Uh, ito ang pinak ito yung pinaka Alcatraz ng anime na to. Okay, so yun ang tapunan talaga ng mga ng mga kriminal. Right? Tapunan talaga ng mga kriminal yon. Itong itong island na to. So, they got scammed into a prison ship and now um Fushi doesn't know where Pioran is. Right? So, well, uh, I was finding ways then he meets then he meets uh he meets again the kid that scammed into this scammed them into this problem at saka embarkada niya right final scene well merong isa pang sinuggest ang batang ito kay Fushi na well another way to um to to rescue Pioran he should um he should enter the arena may, yeah, believe it or not, may, may fighting arena siya. It, it almost looks like the Colosseum of Rome. Okay? So, kailangan, lum, kailangan pumasok siya sa pa, parang fighting tournament na to. Right? So, y- yun, ang, yun ang suggestion ni... Uh, I, I don't know. No. She, hasn't, she hasn't said her name yet. Okay? Ito naging suggestion ng babaeng ito. Ng batang babaeng ito kay Fushi. Now, we don't know kung tatanggapin ni Fushi to or not. Okay? So, overall, it's a really good episode. Okay? After taking uh, a week off because because of a recap episode, okay? Kaya wala tayong, wala tayong ni-review last week regarding To Your Eternity kasi uh, it was a recap episode. So, we're not going to waste our time watching. Not We're not going to waste our time even watching it. Right, so it was a really good. This one's a really good episode. Again, by this anime, pace. What? Um, tama pacing. Right, the pacing was just was justifiable. Because Fushi is Fushi is undergoing uh, a period a period of um. To call it self pity, okay. He is now actually questioning himself, okay. At natutuwa pa ang well, we now know the uh, his creator's name. His name is the Beholder. Yeah, his name is the Beholder, okay. So, uh, natuwa naman ang Beholder na nagtatanong siya, right? So, kumbaga. Um, ganun na ka-advance kung mag-isip si si Fushi. He is now questioning things. Okay? But, but the pacing will make you understand that. Okay? The pacing of this episode. So, yun nga. Yun ang, yun ang na-realize ko. And, well, instead of uh, feeling sorry for Fushi, we as the viewer should be um, should be glad that he's that he's starting to question things, question his existence, question his um his role on this planet. Yan, okay. Yan ang mga tinatanong niya sa episode na to, right? Medyo malalalim na tanong lahat yon. And the beholder is um uh what you call this? 
is beholder the beholder is somewhat glad that Fushi is started to question these kinds started asking these kinds of questions. Siya malalalim na tanong nga to eh, technically. Right? So the pace will make you realize that. Uh, Flo naman. What? First gear shift was... Um, okay. This is probably the most... Imp- I'm telling you guys now. This is probably mo- the most important gear shift of this episode. He could not remember March. That's the first gear shift. Doon lang niya na-realize. Na he could... His memories of March have been taken away by that not by the last knocker he faced. Yung essentially pumatay kay Gugu. Right? So, this knocker did more than just kill Gugu. It took away his memories of March. Kaya he, oh, when when Pioran was asking him to transform into March para makuha niya yung mga prutas-prutas sa pinakukuha niya, hindi niya magawa. Right? He could not he could not remember March's March's um uh looks. Okay, yung yung, yung mukha, katawan, hindi niya magaya ngayon because he has no memories of March. Yun ang kinuha sa kanya ng ng knocker. Wow. Right? Um If you all, if you all still remember March is the first um the first human female na that that came in contact with uh that came in contact with Fushi. Actually, yeah, the first human female and his first parent. All right? Kasi March took it upon herself to uh, to teach this uh this alien life form uh the way of the, the ways of this world. Right? Kaya siya ang pinakaunang parent ni Fushi. And right now, Fushi doesn't even remember who March is. Damn you, knockers. Okay? Damn you. So, second gear shift. What? They got scammed. In, well, Fushi and Pioran got scammed into this prison ship. Dapat kasi, merong, meron, tala, meron talaga silang... Uh, barkong sasakyan doon sa intended nilang pupuntahan so that Fushi can train to his heart's content pero sinabi ng batang ito na nang scam sa kanila na puno na yung barkong yon dito naman daw sila eh, naniwala naman ang dalawa right so uh, they got into the ship and hiniwalay ng batang babae si Pioran kay Fushi, kay Fushi. so Kala na siguro, pataka na ng barko. Okay, sige. Now, Fushi was, Fushi got into, Fushi got thrown into this really cramped um, prison cell. Ayun, do, do not even figure out. This is a prison ship. Alright? You can, you can also call it a slave ship kasi that's how, that's how they, um, that's how they transport slaves from one place to another. Well, historically. Okay? In real life, historically. So, yeah. But it's more of a prison ship kasi uh, lahat yata lang po sa kalat criminal nandito sa barkong to. Right? And they're getting transported to Jananda, the prison island. Right? So, that's the, sh- that's the second gear ship. Final gear ship is when, what? Um, Fushi tried to um, try to scale up the wall and rescue Pioran but he fails so ang taas ng ang taas ng binagsak niya so deads normally kung tao yun deads normally kung tao yun patay na yun okay that's a long drop eh nakita siya ng ng bata babae tsaka ng kanyang barkada na nagre-revive you forget guys Fushi is immortal all right, Be, uh, being an alien life form, yeah, that's go That goes. This gear ship will actually show you how OP Fushi is, right? How um, kung gano ka untapped ang ang OP potential ni Fushi. Ibinom mo mahulog, 
mahulog ka pa naman ng ganong ganong ng ganong kataas right that's a really long drop if you were a normal human you'd be dead but this is pushy so all he did was um regenerate all the injuries in his body and he's good to go at yun ang nakita ng 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 lupon ng mga batang ito so well his secret is now out in this place all right so bakit ko tinawag na gear shift yon kasi um these are potential allies he needs to uh, to rescue Pior, to rescue Pioran right who is uh, who is somewhere on this island who's somewhere on this island now sinabi nga ng batang babae that the easy way to to make your wish come true is to join this fighting tournament she led Fushi to the entrance of that arena so yun nakita natin lahat malakolosium nga eh takes me back takes me back to Cestus the Roman fighter alright malakolosium ang itsura mukhang may kalakihan to eh okay so that's why I call it the gear shift because it is a new uh, it's probably a new phase in 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 Fushi's journey to becoming um, or to becoming or to becoming a real human right but for us anime fans we call this one a mini arc okay we call this one a mini arc say bagong panibagong adventure na naman si ano ang main pro tag eh. now these three gear shifts that um I know the first and the last gear shift these will play a role uh, these these two gear shifts will play a role down the line pro, pro, especially especially to the on the road to the finale tandaan nyo episode 13 na tayo so we only got 7 there's only 7 episodes to go before this anime ends right so medyo we're, we're almost there kaya um, every gear ship like the first and the last of this episode those these are, these are very crucial na because we're, we're nearing the road to the finale okay it may give us an idea of how um, of how Fushi is going to develop as a character and um, will he be able to rescue Pioran right so yun yun, yun ang flow ng episode na to now plot wise Malines. Right? No sleeper moments. Wala ring um wala ring wala ring useless backstories or side stories. Nope, wala. Talagang um uh, mafo-focus ang attention mo sa sa pinagdaanan ni Fushi sa episode na to. Right? So, yeah. Another what you call this? Um it's another event that Fushi has to experience in order to um to make himself into uh probably the best human possible. Unfortunately, this is this is one really bad experience. All right? Him and Pioran got scammed into a prison ship. So in na dun sa sinasabi ni Pioran na pupuntahan nila para makapag-train ng maigi si si Fushi para mapaghandaan niya ang, ang mga knockers next time dito mo sila napunta right so the plot will make you realize this now okay i'm gonna i'm gonna explain it later on okay as um, after i give my rating medyo ano uh, i'm gonna hold that thought so another great episode from this anime right again again so to your eternity episode 13 isip isip pa Ganda nga eh. Oh, two thumbs up. Alright. Let's talk about uh, the final scene. See if you take, if you would take back to uh, to what Pioran said. Na, yun nga, pupuntahan nila itong island na to para makapag-train si, si Fushi ng maigi para mapaghandaan niya ng mabuti ang mga knockers next time. Right? Para, para hindi siya medyo susunga-sunga. Okay. So, um, Fushi can also view this as a um, 
Yeah, definitely. If he really wants to save Pioran to rescue her, he has to enter this tournament para mapagbigyan siya na palayain si Pioran. Alright? So, this can also serve as training for Fushi. Okay? Just in case, well, there's only one reason why he, why he agreed to train. Because he wants to deal with the knockers, well, probably once and for all. Okay? Kasi, uh, the knockers are always seeking him out. And, well, they've already taken March's memories with them. Okay? Kinuha sa kanya. So, yeah. Not only did he lose Gugu, he lost his memories of March because of these knockers. Alright? Kaya, um, if Fushi would view this as, um, let's call this, as combat training for, um, in order for him to, to face the knockers, to, to end the knockers once and for all, yeah. Um, this mini arc, okay, this impending mini arc would be crucial for him. Because, well, the way I see it, Whatever combat training he receives uh, uh, in the next few episodes, yeah, magiging useful sa kanya yun in facing the knockers. Kasi combat training to. Right, this, is, this is a combat tournament. Well, he is going to learn a lot from here. And well, he can, he's unkillable, okay? He's unkillable. So, He'll prob- eventually he will win a match <laughs> okay eventually he will win a match Because no one can kill him okay hindi, hindi siya mapatay patay eh. he's immortal okay so if again if Fushi views this as combat training itong mga itong mga upcoming episodes na to uh, in that combat tournament yeah He's, he will become stronger both physically and emotionally All right so for me well this is a very crucial episode so again to your eternity episode 13 an astounding two thumbs up mga lifestyle so well Next episode has been teasered. Eto na. Isinabak na pala siya. But, um, what happened What happened in this first match? Well, I don't trust the teaser. <laughs> okay? So, gagawin lang natin, wait for next week, and watch that episode in full. Para ma-deep dive, para ma-deep dive natin na maigi. So, in the meantime, mga ka-lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Okay, I'll tell you why. What? Um, bukod ba ito sa isang cyber, uh, well, it is a cyberpunk anime, okay? Based, um, pilot na pilot pa lang, alam mo na yung, ano eh, um, alam mo na, it, this is part of the cyberpunk genre. Well, the episode started with a, um, with an arrest, okay, by the, um, by these two brothers, uh, I, for, I forgot I forgot their family name already okay they were able to capture their target pero something happened ito palang isang kapatid may power pala to release EMPs so nung nirelease niya ganun natapon nga yung magiging asinan dun sa isang kapat dun sa kuya niya pero nadamay lahat ng electronics sa paligid even their own so, essentially, nakatakas yung target nila. Alright? Then, then, the same time this was happening, um, the Kirihara brothers, they were on the, they were on the run. Right? They were, they're gonna get something to eat. So, well, medyo napikon yung, napikon yung isang kapatid dun sa isang, well, uh, 
doon sa sinasabi ng sa sinasabi ng isang customer. So para sa sinami psychic powers ha, itong magkapatid na to. He used his own psychic power to to blow up the bottle of wine na na ininom ng na ininom ng, ng mag-boyfriend na to. Okay? Na figure out tuloy ng lalaki kung sino may gawa. Sila dalawa. Kinumpronta sila dalawa. Right? So, medyo wimpy pala itong older na Kirihara. Pero, when this, uh, when this douchebag of a guy laid his hands on the younger brother, hmm, that's when the older Kirihara showed what he can really do. Ayun, napatay niya. Napatay niya na laki. So, well, in essence, tumakbo na sila. Right. Binayaran ba ng binayaran ba ng younger brother yung ano niya? Yung tari to. Ah, uh, yung yung bill nila pero wala naman silang nakuha. So, final scene is when um it's sort of a backstory scene. Went back one year kasi 2041. So, nag ito naman 20 ano 20 something eh. Basta as a side story shows a girl collapsed kinuha siya ng isang scientist din nila sa, in air lift na sa isang helicopter na parang ano pang combat eh right pang combat na helicopter right so that's where the pilot of this anime ended right overall it's a good pilot okay it's a good pilot Pace. Well, um, ano ano sa ba? Well, I I was able to watch the episode uh, a few minutes, several minutes ago. So that so papa takyo ng bandang 3:30 to 4. Yeah, medyo antuki na ako nun. But uh, I had sleeper moments. Okay, I had sleeper moments with this um with this pilot, kasi because of the pacing. Right. It was probably too slow for a pilot. Right? Too slow for a pilot. What? Oh, nandun na nga ako na you have to present two sides, two sides of the of this anime of this anime storyline. Right? And what well, um In case you don't know, mga ka-lifestyle, Nighthead is an anime franchise. Kasi may nauna pang... May nauna pang original series to. Nighthead Genesis. So, 2041 is the reboot. Now, I'm not exactly familiar with the... Um, uh, with this anime... With this anime... With this franchise. Kasi... Uh, ngayon ko na narinig ito. When I saw the synopsis of the reboot. I don't know. 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 Don't All right. Well, um medyo may kabilisan yung yung pacing. Most recent most recent example is um X-Arm. All right? That's a cyberpunk anime. And of course, um Cowboy Bebop. All right? Oh, well, maganda ang pacing ng mga 'yan, ng mga pilots nila. Now, I found it unusually slow. The pacing of this episode, pero it's it wasn't enough to make me um to make my mind uh, go somewhere else, right? Hindi hindi naman ganon hindi naman ganon kalala ang ang pacing nito. It, it still kept it to the story, it still kept it to the story of the uh, the pilot. Okay, so um uh, unusually slow ang pacing ng pilot na to. So, yun lang masasabi ko. Okay? So, flow naman. 
Well, the first gear shift is when, um, when they when of the time when these police brothers, oh, uh, yung target nila nakatakas, hey, na katakas, kaya na katakas kasi gumamit ng powers yung isa, right? Gumamit ng EMP power. So I thought, malakas to, ah. malakas ang power nito, grabe. Imagine yourself, okay? With the power to cause an electromagnetic pulse with a with a, with a considerably wide radius, okay? With a considerably wide range, okay? Strong enough to take out all the electronics in the area. All right? Including your own. Including your own. All right? Kaya nga nakatakas yung target nila eh. Na-disable lahat ng electronics, so, lahat ng means to capture him, hindi magamit. Or to, well, actually, na-aresto na nila. When this happened, hindi eh, na-disable yung handcuffs niya. Hmm, katakas. Umisto ko, Right? So, yeah, that's a gear shift. That's a gear shift. Um... The final gear shift, okay, I, I, I actually only saw two, right? The final gear shift came when the older Kirihara, was it, well, well, he went, yeah, he went ballistic on this guy using his powers, using his own psychic powers, he kills him. Ganun lang. Excuse me. <coughs> So, yun nga. There were only two gear, two gear shifts that I saw here. And I I got a I got a huge feeling that these two gear shifts will play a role in this anime. In the entire anime, right? So, mukhang nagpakita lang ng kapangyarihan ng dalawang dalawang pare sa mga kapatid na to. Okay? These two sets of brothers. Right? Well, they they are in the key visual after all. Down the line, magkakasago pa ang dalawang angka na to. Okay? So, yeah. Which makes the storyline a little bit more interesting. Hmm. Plot-wise, malinis. Right? Kasi there's, there's a way of telling, a, telling two sides of a story without cinching in those um, side stories to break the monotony or even uh, what you call this or slow down the pace as to um, as to make as to make the viewer or listener sleep nope there's a way na para maging malinis ang plot ng isang episode all you have to do is present it <clears throat> present one side in the first half of the episode and the other side for the second half naman Alright? Hindi. Yun. Ganun na rin yun. Ganun na rin yun. Okay? So, they presented it this way. Kaya, yung plot, malinis. Kumbaga, while this was happening, this was happening. Alright? So, maganda naman yung... Maganda yung ano niya eh. Um, maganda yung pagkaka-plot ng episode na to. Kaya, kung sinabing malinis... Alright? Kaya, hindi mo naman sasabing planchado because there, the only, the only side story, the only true side story here was the final scene. At ang labo pa. Okay? It's unclear. It's unclear, it's unclear how that went down. Alright? It's so unclear. Kaya pero, ginawa na rin final scene. Alright? Kaya, Malinis ang plot nito. Alright? Malinis pa rin. So, it's a good pilot. Alright? And, um, but, yeah, uh, I'll tell you later. So, Night Head 2041, Episode 1. Yeah, we can. Two thumbs up. Right? Two thumbs up.
Bakit? Well, I cannot erase the fact that um the way these two sets of brothers showed their powers. Nope, you can't deny that. It was slam bang, right? Proof na talagang well, down the line, magkakasago pa talaga dalawang ang dalawang ang dalawang angka na to. Because well, that, I think that's how the story will go, right? These policeman brothers will go after the Kirihara brothers, right? And, and of course, the Kiriharas, the Kiriharas will do everything they can to stay free, right? Because they are living in a world where where powers like these are considered taboo. Religion is considered taboo, right? You can actually get arrested for for believing in for believing in God in this anime. All right, so talagang Masasabi mong cyberpunk anime ito. It has all the elements. A dystopic society. Right? In, 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 in real life, huh? it's a dystopic society. The, uh, the technology is outrageous. Right? Although, medyo nandun na tayo sa level na yun. Okay? Current human, current human technology. And, yeah. Characters with, well, Lead characters with with issues, okay? May, they, they, these four have issues. Okay? Na, ma, nararamdaman ko na eh. Okay? Being a fan of the cyberpunk genre since, um, since Galaxy Express 999, you all remember that anime movie? Yep. Ever since that, I've been a fan, I've been, I've been a cyberpunk fan. Okay? So, I've seen... I've seen the great ones like Ghost in the Shell, yeah, yeah, the Holy Trinity of Cyberpunk. Ghost in the Shell, Akira, and of course my favorite Cowboy Bebop. All right, so my, my all-time favorite Cyberpunk anime. Well, this one is not to the level of Cowboy Bebop yet. All right, you know, you know, but based on based on the pilot. It might come into its own. Probably in the League of Psychopaths. Yan, parang ganyan. In the League of Psychopaths. Parang ganyan yan eh. So, well, um, I hope I didn't leave anything out. Alright? If I, if I left anything out to, for discussion, alright, comment below. Alright? Let's talk about that. Yung, kung may na-leave na out ako rito sa review na to, that, that, that I forgot to talk about in this video, all right? Comments and comments, huh? So again, Ninth Head 2041, Episode 1. Two thumbs up. Hey, welcome to the roster. Two thumbs up. So, wow. Um, well, it's too early to tell if. If this anime um, teasers its next episode, kasi pilot pa lang eh, it's understandable. Kahit hindi ka naman teaser sa pilot, okay lang eh. Alright? Most anime fans will understand that. Kaya, ano, nga, ano dapat natin gawin? Wait for next week and watch the next episode. So, maybe that episode will clear things up regarding the impending feud between these two between these two sets of brothers, right? So until then, mga lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews, right? Wow! All right. So, I'm going to ASMR because uh, I wasn't. I wasn't feeling too well last night and major carry over pa ngayon. So, please bear with me, Michael. Mga kalaystal as I review episode 16 of this anime, alright? So, you and the gang have found the Patch Village. Pero, uh, it's a tourist attraction pala. Alright? Pero, sabi ni Lee, sir, eh, para hindi masayang ang oras natin dito. We can, we, we we'll just have to, we just have, we just have to look around for clues, right? 
Ano natin, baka, baka wala pa nagagalaw. Diba? Then all of a sudden, we come across this area of the village with a keep out sign. Then at the same time, lumabas ang limang alipores ni Hao. Wonderful. Alright. So, well, the first to step up the plate from from house lackeys is Dracula. Hmm. Okay. Saman to. Pero, uh, I think direct descendant siya ni, ni Vlad Tepes. Right? Kung saan nanggaling yung legend ni Dracula. Okay. Yeah, he's also known. He's also known as Vlad the Impaler, historically, right? Probably one of the most vile characters in history. The one who really stepped up to the plate from your side, Siriunoske. Hmm. Because in insulto ni Dracula, le, di naman insulto. It's a it's a weak word. Binalahura ni Dracula ang kanyang pompadour. <laughs> And we all know how um, we all know how how pissed off Ryunosuke can be kapag pinakilaman yung buhok niya. Right? Kumaga um ang mentality niya ganito eh. Guluhin mo lang ang buhay ko. Huwag lang buhok ko. <laughs> Ganun lang yun. Alright? I repeat. Guluhin mo lang ang buhay ko. Huwag lang buhok ko. <laughs> so, he got really pissed off at Dracula. So, siya ang unang, siya ang talagang kumalaban, kumalaban sa, sa alipores ni Hound na to. Right? Wow. Alright. Um, the, the fight became so bad, it now involved Ren, Horo Horo, and even Yo. Right? Pinahostage pa nga ni Dracula doon sa Guardian Ghost na si Yo eh. Through Lizard. Alright. Parang wow. It was tense. Okay. Hinostage si Yo eh. So, final scene. Well, nalaman, nalaman ni nalaman ni Ryunosuke ang weakness ng mukong na to. Kinuntsaba niya, siyempre, ang kanyang guardian ghost na si, um, um, yun, si Tokagero. Yun, si Tokagero. So, kunwari, kunwari, tinakasa siya ni Tokagero. Yun pala, iispiyahin niya sa likod. <laughs> ganun, katu- ganun katuso ang guardian ghost na to. Alright? He's been, he's, well, he's been a cold calculating psycho for 600 years. Kaya, hindi kaya ni Dracula ang pagkatukso niya. <laughs> right? But, in, but, but, in the end of the final scene, yeah, Ryunosuke is ready to kill this guy. Talagang, full mode na yung ano niya eh. Full mode na oversoul niya. And it's, and it's really scary looking. <laughs> Talagang nakakatakot ang itsura. <laughs> okay? Overall, It's a fucking good episode. All right. Bakit? Pace. Well, you thought that um you thought that uh it's going to be it's going to be a slow pace for, for the entire episode. Nope. Natural lang 'yun. All right. Kasi biglang biglang nga sisingit yung mga alipores ni Howe. Eh. All right. The pace suddenly picked up. Ayun, nung dumating na sila. Right? Nung pumicture na sila. Right? That's when the pace picked up. So, kumbaga, um, I don't think, I, I don't think it slowed down during the battle scene. Eh. During that very long battle scene. Hindi eh. Um, although, Dracula's bad story was a bit boring. Alright? It's a bit boring. Nonetheless, the pacing was the pacing was totally fine. Okay, pacing was totally fine. I'm I'm done with the pacing. Tama lang. So, flow naman. First gear shift is when Yo and the gang saw this 
keep out sign in this particular area of the um, of the village because later on in the episode malalaman natin it, it turns out na yung talagang uh, yung talagang patch village doon ang umpisa ng daan na yun yung talagang daan ng 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 actual na patch village this was revealed by house henchmen right so, pinabayan na lang pinabayan na kasi ni nil pinabayan na kasi nilang lumabad si Dracula sa 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 mga bida natin all right because according to the one who looks like a the one who looks like a mummy or uh, the one who looks like a tuareg or something well Dracula's beyond our control so we might as we so we might as well enter the patch village ourselves all right second gear ship well um is when Dracula uh, gained control of Lizard. Siyempre, kinagat. Ma- vampire talaga eh. If you're, if you get bitten by a vampire, you become a vampire yourself. Ganun lang yan. Alright? So, wow. Okay. So, yo, yo and the rest were trying to figure out on how to, um, how to work their way around this shaman's, uh, Guardian Ghost over Soul. Alright? So, they were trying to find the way talaga. Until, yun. Which led to the final gear shift. Sinabi lang niyo, kasi habang naka, habang inokostage na ni Lizard, tapos si Lizard naman naka, uh, on, on Dracula's command, isasaksak niya yung sarili niyang ano, lalamunan, yung liig. He's going, to, he's going to stab himself in the neck with Harosame. Alright? So, sinabi lang ni Yo, that's why. So, nag-gets ka agad ng, nag-gets ka agad ng apat. Nag-gets ka agad ng apat. On, on how to, on how to, on how to beat this douchebag. On how to beat this douchebag. So, I, I call that a gear shift kasi, um, it showed us how much of a team they are now. Lana tung yah bumalik si horo horo sa kanila, right? He's more mature now, so yeah, he's he's a team player now. Pero nandu pa rin yung baka, nandu pa rin yung yung usual na awayan nila ni ni Ren, alright? And then yung usual na bangayan ni nila ni Ren. So yeah, that, that's the comic. That's the comic relief there. Okay, that's the that's the main comic relief. So these three gear shifts, okay, especially um, the first and the last, will play a role in future episodes. Because nandun na sila sa ano eh, nandun na sila sa entrance patungo tunay na Patch Village. The tourist attraction one. Yun, it's obvious, front lang yun. It's just a front. Right? So, yeah. The first and final gear shifts of this uh, this episode will play a role in the next in the next few or several ones. Right? Plot-wise. Well, malinis. Alright? Despite the long, boring Backstory of Dracula, <laughs> right? You, you you can it's it's negligible. It's it's so boring. It's negligible. All right. So, pwede ko na sabihin na malinis ang plot. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Who? Who wants to hear your fucking backstory, Dracula? Babasahin na lang namin sa mga libro ni Bram Stoker. Ulul. <laughs> We'll just grab a book by Bram Stoker and we'll read it and we'll just read it there ourselves, okay? So Who cares about your backstory? <laughs> who cares about your backstory? The backstory has um probably served its purpose, all right? Kasi if it weren't this boring, hindi magiging malinis sa plot. All right? Even boring backstories have their purpose. Okay? They still have their function in in an episode. Alright? So, yeah. Malinis talaga ang plot ng ano eh. Kasi, um, 
Personally, it made me realize that should I listen to this guy's backstory? Come on, I'm on the episode. Come on, I'm on the main story. All right. So, talagang yung focus, yung focus ng viewer talagang nandun sa story ang yun. On how they're going to um, how they're going to defeat Dracula. Okay? On how they're going to defeat this shaman. Uh, para maka para makapasok na sila dun sa sa restricted area ng Patch Village. Yung, yung talagang tunay na daan sa patungong tunay na Patch Village. Eh. Alright? Kaya, malinis ang plot. So, yeah. Another great episode from this reboot. Talagang, wow! And the action sequences, Vintage Shaman King. <laughs> so, Shaman King 2021, episode 16. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Maka lifestyle. Alright, so, what? Um, another thing this episode showed me is that yung yung uh, yung ano eh, uh, yung teamwork na na develop na ng sa mga sa mga barkada ni Yo right lalong lalo na nung bumalik si Horo Horo right so talagang ano na kumbaga nakakaam kum, <coughs> figuratively nakakaamo yan na ang mga to especially when Especially, they now know especially on how Yo thinks. Alright? Kaya sinabi lang, sinabi lang ni Yo, that's why. Mm. Gets na nila. They now know how to, they now know how to work their way around this hostage, this hostage situation and on how to take out this shaman. This douchebag of a shaman. Right? Kaya, yun ang isang na, uh, yun ang isang nakita ko sa episode na to. Right? It's one reason why I still gave it the two, the two thumbs up. Okay? So again, Shaman King 2021 episode 16 Two thumbs up! So, title of the next episode has been teasered. Malang confusing ah. Tandaan nyo, Binitin tayo ni Ryunosuke rito. Right? He was raring to go yeah, raring to go toe to toe against this shaman for real. Kaya baka yun ang makikita natin sa episode na to. Wag na, don't, don't mind, don't mind the title. Okay? Don't mind the title muna. Just um expect what you're going to see in that episode. Kaya we'll just have to wait for next week for that episode and we're going to watch that. In the meantime, mga ka-lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest, okay? Saan mo yan. Yeah. So, oh, here's how it went, right? Di ba nung uh, finale, yung final scene ng um, episode 2 eh, uh, yung kingdom na pinagsisibihan ni tawag ito ni Hawthorne eh well just got erased off the map now we know who did it okay it was one of um it, it was one of Juscelino's um henchmen si Blue okay. yung medyo may katangkarang ogre right so, what? Well, eventually, Mikoto got to him. He was killed. All right. So, dalaman na natin ito midway through the episode, through a backstory. Now, this guy named Sumeragi, all right, gathered, uh, um, con- ane, convened the uh, the hundred ogre meeting. Okay. And sinabi niya ang pake ng meeting na to. 
how to eliminate me ko to okay? whom they call the peach boy okay so okay? talagang over the years talagang nilagas ni ni Miko to ang mga ra, no, ang mga ang mga ogre right in a land that they once dominated dominated in terms of um, territory yeah in terms of territorial rights kalahati na lang yun na natitira sa kanila so and it's all because of Miko to right talagang he swore, he swore vengeance toward all, towards all ogres. Okay. He, well, he, declares, he declared war over them. Okay. So, and this was the result. So, sabi nga ng iba, para para natin tatalunin to. One of the, um, one of the ogres even suggested to uh, all the 100 ogres, the, all the 100 ogres there to band together to, to hunt him down. Pero, Ang naging proof ni Sumeragi na that won't be possible is Blue's head na dala-dala pa niya sa meeting. Alright. So, the Hobbit Ogre meeting uh, went for naught. You know, so, na, 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 nasayang. This, I, I said, I guess Mikoto is, is that invincible. Alright. To render a hundred ogre meeting useless, they, they just couldn't find a way to kill him because he was always—I think he was always ten steps ahead of every, ten steps ahead of every ogre out there. Right? Nakita rin dito that Sumiragi also has other interests. All right. Final scene. Nagkita ang well. Um. Of course, si Miko to, then Sally, and of course, well, ang lumalamas ngayon ng main villain, si Sumiragi. Sumiragi and Miko to, they were actually, they were actually, um, both were telling Sally to, to, to join them. Right? Magkaibang, magkaibang side to. Right? Miko to is fueled by vengeance. Alright? He only wants one thing to to um to drive the ogres into exist to into um what you call this into extinction he wants to make the ogres extinct ito naman si sumiragi he wants peace between ogres and humans pareho daw sila ng objective ni sally so sally's down there for the dilemma okay um Who's, who's, who is she going to choose? Okay. Which, which, which side will she be on? Sa side ni Sumiragi? Or uh, that, has, that has vested interests? Or si Mikuto with, well, he has no interest but, but, to, but to destroy all ogres. Yeah. Diyan nagtapos ang episode. Right? Overall, um, it's, a, it's a good episode. It's a, it's a good episode. But not good enough for... Um, uh, well, I'll, I'll just explain. Okay? Pace. Well, three episodes in, I now, I've now figured out how, how the pacing of Peach Boy Riverside uh, works. How it goes. Kung baga, kung magbaba story sila, saglit lang. Kung if they're going to explain something, they're not going to explain it scientifically, yung talagang mahabang explanation. Right? Nope. They'll just get down to it and be over and done with. Right? So, pero ang... Ang hindi kagandahan dito sa pacing ng Peach Boy Riverside is basta na lang sila sisingit ng backstory. Alright? Basta na lang sila sisingit ng ng backstory. Right? Um, so far, I haven't encountered side stories. Alright? So, if they 
If they send you in a side story, yeah, they're pushing the envelope too far. Okay? But for now, the pacing is decent. Okay? The pacing is decent. Now, this, for this particular episode, okay? Only for this particular episode, the pacing is decent. So, flow naman. First gear shift is when Subiragi um, presided over the 100 Ogre meeting. Siya mismo ang nagpatawag. Okay? Siya mismo ang nagpatawag. Ang 100 Ogre meeting. So, if it weren't for this gear shift, we wouldn't see that Sumeragi has his own interests in mind. That's why he convened these ogres. Okay? We've seen his facial expression. It is no good for both humans and ogres. At medyo naka... Medyo nagkahinala na yung... Yung isa niyang... Yung isa niyang subordinate. Okay, sabi niya. Sabi, sabi niya sa sarili niya. I don't trust his interests. Okay. I am not sure about his own interests. Okay. So, kapan yung ogre nagkakain na na sa kanya? This early. Second gear shift is when um, Mikoto and Sally, well, they crossed paths finally. Okay. After two episodes. So, nakita, nakita sila because of the, of the fighting tournament. Yung sidekick ni ni Miko to na si Milia ay eh kasali din pala sa tournament. Kasali din pala siya sa tournament. Excuse me. But he he was in a rush to um to head out. Hindi lang niya papang only mag-compete si Milia. Okay? Milia is a former ogre na ni rehabilitate ni Miko to. The same way Mikoto did to to Meki. Yan. Pinutunan din. Uh, I'm assuming na pinutunan din niya na sungay itong si Milia. Alright? Yun ang, yun, ang, yun ang source ng yun ang source of power ng lahat ng ogre. Eh. Yung kaninang sungay. You cut that off, they're just as, they're just as human as anyone. Okay? They're just as regular as anyone. So they're not a threat anymore. So, yun nga. That's, a, that's the second gear shift. Kasi, this was the first meeting of the two main protags. Alright? So, I'll explain. Bakit, I'll explain further kung bakit gear shift ang mga to, Okay? So, final gear shift is of course when uh, Sumiragi approached Sally. So, habang kinakasap niya, we're, we're like-minded. We're like-minded daw, pero you... Uh, from the get-go, I just couldn't trust that pretty face, that pretty face of his. Right? I just couldn't trust that pretty face of his. Then, Mikuto, Mikuto comes along. Tilala niya sa Sumiragi. He told Sally that this is a high ogre. Okay? And he should be dead right now. In essence. Alright? Talagang fighting stance na si... <laughs> fighting stance na si ano nun, Si Mikuto. He was ready to, wow, okay, to deliver the to deliver the killing blow right there. Yeah, he, he well, obviously he's done that before. He's done that before. Like, um, he's a he's a serial killer of he's an ogre serial killer. Eh. So talagang wow, right? He was he was scary in this gear shift. Talagang pinakita niya yung ano yung um uh, yung ruthlessness yung hatred niya against ogres right so these three gear shifts that i saw especially um the first and the third yan they will play a role in this anime in in uh in future episodes right if not the next if not the next episode yeah in future ones you can you guys can now go back to this episode to see how it all how how it all played out how it all first played out all right plot naman hmm so far 
um, three episodes in, hindi ko masasabing planchado pa ang plot ng Peach Boy Riverside. Particularly for this episode. Right? Kasi, they're employing a unique way of delivering backstories. Right? But, but so far, these are backstories the, the viewers really need to know. Okay? So, yeah, right now, yeah, planchado ang plot. Because, well, Asahi Productions is doing a doing a swell job in um, in orchestrating all these uh the, these main stories, these back stories, meshing them in such a way na hindi uh, what to call this hindi mabobor ang viewer because uh, if you think if you make if you make the plot too complicated, you're yeah, the viewer, the viewer will lose interest and sudden, and he or she will probably skip to another video <laughs> or another anime, worse <laughs> or something worse. Yeah, which is to uh, switch to another anime, right? So yeah, you can say na yeah, talagang planchado ang plot ng ng episode uh, episode three, right? But it's not enough to be called clean or malinis. Okay, planchado. Okay, planchado. Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong with being planchado. Yeah, you, of course, clothes you have to iron for um for your fanciest clothes you have to iron them out just to before you before you before you put them on for a uh, for a big party or something. Ganito rin ganito rin dito. You really need to iron things out in order for in order for the for the episode to be appreciated by well, none other by us anime anime fans, right? Pace, flow, and plot. Um, yeah, they they have each have their own way of um, of uh, making the episode look good, right? So overall, yeah, it's a good episode. So. Peach Boy Riverside episode 3 Yeah, not enough. Ang tamap lang. Bakit? Because well, um I think I I could cite um uh, I could cite one of the gear shifts, uh particularly the, the second one. Right? It was a um, a weak precedent to the final scene, right? It was a weak precedent. I say, well, um, here here is Sally, all excited to to meet up to meet up with Mikoto again, right? I think it's been five years since they last since they last saw each other. Parang ganon yun eh. Ito lang si Mikoto. Masyadong, masyadong, fo- masyadong focus sa kanyang mission of vengeance eh. Alright? This was... Um, someone whom, whom he saved is actually showing gratitude to... Actually throwing back the gratitude. But yeah, sabi niya, Uy, kumusta na? Kumusta na? He's already considering, considering him as a friend. Alright? Ito naman si Miko to. Sama ko ba? Uy, ganun lang. Para pala wala wala sa wala kay mo emotion eh when it comes to friends right this is this is probably the reason why he only has a dog for a for a traveling companion right oh there's nothing wrong with the dog I, I got I got my dog here okay I got my dog here and he's um he's accompanying he's accompanying me through these recordings right now all right but I found it um I found it a week preceded for a week preceded to the final scene. All right, and I don't know why Mikoto suddenly offered offered uh, allegiance, offered uh, that Mikoto was actually um, uh, actually wants Sally to be his ally. Right? I don't know what his deal is because he's 
he's been a lone wolf ever since he started all this whole vengeance thing why only now is it probably because to um, to piss off uh, to piss off Sumiragi 60% true okay, 60% that will play out but I don't know right um, I could not find um, a moment here that would um, that would make me give this episode the two thumbs up Yangang one thumb up lang. But there's no denying the fact that Peach Boy Riverside has its own way of um, of pacing its episodes. Okay, so uh, I'm I'm beginning to understand it now. I'm beginning to understand this anime now when it comes to that the pacing. <clears throat> Umaga, hindi siya mag hindi siya mag tutupik tutupik sa backstory. It'll only um, show a backstory for a few seconds. Alright? Just for a few seconds. Then, back to the main story. Yeah, I'll give them that. Alright? They should have done more with the flow. Okay? They should have done more with the flow. Kumaga, <clears throat> they should have improved on the second gear shift. Right? Um... I don't know, maybe Migoto should have given Sally a smile of something or something. Oi, I don't know. So that's why I just gave it the one thumb up. So again, Peach Boy Riverside episode 3. One thumb up. Hey, not satisfied. One thumb up. So, what? Well, title of the next episode has been teasered well I'm gonna do it lang eh. I'm still well this anime also has a um, has a way of confusing audiences with its teasers alright for kai title lang alright so what do we do in this situation well we wait for next week and watch that episode in the meantime mga ka lifestyle for you guys Enjoy the other reviews, right? Wow, right? Just goes to show you how um how evil Sato has become, right? And probably we're going to see we're going to see that same evil all throughout season two, okay? Confirmed na. So gonna be on. She was, um, what you call this? Well, basically, uh, she's being fueled by curiosity right now. She wanted to learn how to, how to, um, how to use a gun. Uh, nagpaturo siya kay Kim Yon. Then, in, well, um, uh, in, uh, on one Sunday, well, it was it was a game it was a game day for their club, all right? Everyone was winning, and of course, Kate, of course, KG is lagging behind, right? So, final scene. Remember the final. Remember that scene from episode four and episode um, episode five. Nang binigyan ni KG ng um, old school na manika si Mion. Yup. That was the final scene, but it the camera veered to to the vending machine with a with a drop with a drop used syringe in front of it. That means only one thing. Ginamit na ni Sato ko, ane ginamit na ni Sato ko ang hinamizawa syndrome virus kay Mion. All right, okay, Alex. I'm going to I'm, we're going to deep dive into that by well by reviewing by breaking it down ARD style all right pace well um kung hindi ka sanay sa sa story ng Higurashi sigurado aantukin ka sa episode na to right 
Ako, well, medyo sanay na ako because I, I've already we've, we've already reviewed season 1 of the reboot. Okay, so yeah. Um, there's for every episode of of the Higurashi reboot, there's always something disturbing. All right? Now, the pacing will make you realize that well uh, don't expect any um don't expect any bloodshed from this episode but the the disturbing nature of this anime yep it's here all right so talagang yung pacing niya vintage higurashi again right so pero everything is being done from Satoko's point of view slow but disturbing okay slow but disturbing flow naman well the first gear shift I saw here was when um um was when Satoko was trying to find a quicker way to die alright Satoko is the main villain of, of season 2 Right, and no one knows it. No one knows it yet. Okay, so no one knows it yet. So this was the first gear shift. Santoko wanted to learn how to how to use a gun. Okay, tandaan yon. Santoko is only eleven year old Santoko. Gusto matutunan ako paano humawak ng barrel. Right, that's disturbing in itself. That's disturbing in itself. Okay. Second gear shift is when well, she finally, um, she finally convinces Mion to teach her on how to use a gun. Because um, at her age, Mion is now Mion can handle Mion can handle firearms. Okay, I think there's a, I think there's a law in Japan that allows um, yeah, because above thirteen na pala si ano, above thirteen na pala si Mion. So yes. She can now handle firearms. Okay, she can she can already get a firearms license. So nagpaturo siya. Okay. And final gear ship is when during the final scene. Yeah. It was I think that was um it's one of the scenes of episode 5 of season 1. Pero may variation. Tandaan nyo, All the episodes so far are being done from Satoko's point of view. Ayun, pinakita yung hiringgil yung ubos. Nandun sa vending machine, eh, bumili na drinks dun si Mione. Tapos, no, before that, ha, bumili, ng soft, bumili na soft drinks dun si Mion. Behind her is Satoko. Na may ha- na hawak na yung hiringgil yung na punong-puno pa. With the Hinamizawa Syndrome Virus. Before that, Sinabi ni Sato ko na Ano kaya kung si Mion ang gamitan ko nito? Ano kaya ang magiging reaction niya sa sa virus na to? Eh Kung titingnan niyo lahat, Mion is the most emotionally stable of the of all the lead characters. She's the most emotionally stable. Right? Si si Kechi may pagka-paranoid. Si Sato ko naman Wow, okay? She's pure. She's embraced. She's embraced evil. Si Rika naman, uh, ma- medyo uh, what you call this? Um, always being positive. All right. Si Rena naman, e pa kapara no itin. Right. So Mion. That leaves Mion as the most the most emotionally stable of the five of the five lead characters. Right? At gagamitan niya at at gusto at inexperimentuhan na siya ni Sato ko. Right? So yeah. <laughs> expect more disturbing things in the next few episodes because it is now Mion's turn. Yung mini arc niya sa season 1 medyo hindi pa ako convinced eh okay but i i'm hoping that her arc here in season 2 will be will be much more disturbing than that because ayun na 
the third gear shift happened sinaksakan na siya ng hinamis ako syndrome ni Sato ko nang hindi niya alam wow <laughs> so definitely the three gear shifts I saw here will play a role in future episodes okay ganyan naman, ganyan naman, talaga, ganyan naman talaga hirug ang higurashi eh ganyan naman talaga higurashi eh diba plot wise mmm planchado right and I am telling you mga lifestyle if you did not see season 1 of the reboot do not watch this right either andokin kayo or you'll or you'll be bored as hell watching it right the plot will make you realize that okay yeah. it will make you realize that if you haven't seen season 1 watch this episode or watch season 2 at your own risk right kasi talagang hindi mo maintindihan ng episode na to right because it is that um, it is that organized okay it's that organized kaya plan, pero planchado ang episode na to right swak swak ang plot right so well another great episode from this anime right Higurashi is the Higurashi I'm telling you the Higurashi reboot is more disturbing than the original and I've seen only a few episodes of the original so Higurashi Sotsu episode 4 two thumbs up right bucket what? That's what deep that's what deep dives are for. Okay. Kasi ko titingnan niyo ah. Um Rika did did nothing more in season 1 than to fix whatever uh whatever Oyashiro's curse laid um uh what you call this? Whatever big whatever Whatever, whoever people, uh, Oyashiro's, Oyashiro's curse has been victim has been victimizing. Okay, kung baga inaayos niya. Dito si Sato ko, she's making things worse, right? And she has, oh, she has a um, she has the ultimate weapon, the Hinamo, the Hinamizawa syndrome virus, na ninaon niya during the finale of season one. Now, now well, we all know why. Because she wants to keep Rika in Hinamizawa. Right? And, and now, she wants to experiment on Myon as to how Myon will respond to this disease. Okay? So, that's why I gave it the two thumbs up. Because, wow. Right? I'm telling you guys, if you did not see season 1 of the reboot, hindi nyo maiintindihan ang episode na to. Or any of the episodes that we have reviewed so far in season 2. Okay? Wow. Okay? Higurashi is... Wow, talagang masasabi nyo. It's one of the most disturbing anime franchises of all time. Right? Episode 4 has... has showed us all why. Okay. So again, Higurashi Sotsu episode 4. Two thumbs up. Hey, twist to the story, two thumbs up, ah, lifestyle. In typical Higurashi fashion, title of the next episode has been teasered. It's more confusing than ever. <laughs> right? So don't trust the, don't trust any teasers, right? Kahit yung kahit title only lang yan. What we have to do now is to wait for next week and watch that episode. So for you mga ka lifestyle, until that time comes, enjoy the other reviews, right?
first and foremost, yeah, Matt Hals nga ang gumawa nito. Alright. We find uh, several high school kids trapped in this school in the middle of um, darkness. Yeah, literal darkness. Alright. And some of them, well, um, the um, the elitists of the uh, of this batch um, try to enforce their own rules. Okay, yeah, I'm feeling uh, it gave me the well. I'll explain. I'll explain later. All right. So they try to enforce their own rules, and basically, well, one of them went too far. He hits one student in the head with a baseball bat all right and in this world most of them now most of them have superpowers uh, wow imagine several delinquent kids having superpowers but they're in an environment they are totally unfamiliar of yeah that's probably the theme of this anime final scene well the two main protags nozomi at chakasi uh, i forgot i forgot the guy's name right nozomi took a leap of faith because she truly believed that she f she's found a way to get for all of them to get out of that darkness and well she literally took that leap of faith but the guy stopped her fall because but they eventually took the fall both of them and they suddenly landed in the ocean and they suddenly see land wow right the pile well overall right it's a fucking good pilot First and foremost, um, I found the pilot both disturbing and uh, weird. All right, there's a fine line between weird and disturbing, mind you guys. Pace, well, it felt both like a pilot and a finale. Yeah, the pacing of this episode made me realize that because, well. As if um, the enemy is over, all the kids are now in are now back to reality. All because of Nosami taking that leap of faith. But, um, but the way it started, yeah, it was really gloomy, and I think it well. I guess the fast pace of this uh, this episode truly uh, showed us all how bizarre and disturbing this this anime would be. All right, well, the pacing of the pilot showed that. It really, really, it really showed that to me. All right, Florida man, first gear ship is when um, uh, Nozomi has her first conversation with this guy for the first time in this pilot that's when we found out that some kids have superpowers already like um, their bending reality um, giving out penalties right? if you put like if you point at someone he or she's going to receive a huge X on her face then she suddenly does uh, these weird punishments yeah that power has a name penalty all right and um suddenly switch and one power suddenly suddenly switches one sw making one organic life form and one non-organic one switch places wow <laughs> i wish i had a power like that all right I wish everybody had a power like that, but that gear shift told us that some of these kids have superpowers. 
All right, basically. Second gear shift is when, well, Cap, the big guy, right, became a representative for um, these, uh, there are actually three students, okay. One is Cap, the other is the, um, the student council president, it's a girl, and the other one, I think, is the, um, I think he's the editor-in-chief of the school paper, all right. So, well. I went through high school, so I know how uh, how big those positions are in in high school, right? Okay, I know how I know how much of a big shot you can be if you're either one of those. So these three started to uh, um, announce that they're going to set that uh, a special set of rules need to be in place. So nakaranang hindi na nagkaroon ng election, right? Oh, hindi na nagkaroon ng, well, plebiscite. That's what you call it. A plebiscite kung agree ang buong student body about this or hindi. Kagad sila nag-election for a leader. So, naboto si Cap. Right? Final gearship is when, well, Nosomi took that leap of faith. And, well, and inadvertently, that guy, okay, nasama siya, all right. And yeah, they suddenly found themselves in the middle of the ocean, um, in which it's just a stone's throw away. Pwede nga nila, pwede nila nang, nang huyan nandun na sila, right? It's just an island. So, that means they're back to reality. These three gear shifts will probably play a role in this anime. Yep, that's the way I see it. Plot wise, if you don't want to think when you watch an anime, don't watch this anime. All right, for uh, for me, uh, I am so done with this. All right animes that make people think you know you know me very well Maka lifestyle I love these kinds of animes so uh, but I could not say na malini some plot alright it really felt like a um, it really felt like a pilot and a finale to me at the same time alright this pilot has its special aura okay in which the plot yeah, you can say that's um, halfway between clean and ironed out. Nasakit na siya ng malinis at planchado. Okay. The clean part is uh, there's one faction who really wants to who really wants to control the student body. Alright. And there's one faction who just wants to who just wants to who just wants everything to go back to normal and be themselves again right you know this kind of um this kind of power struggle reminds me of one book lord of the flies yeah it's a lot like this okay it works a lot like lord of the flies I actually got those Lord of the Flies feels while I was watching this pilot. And so I thought, mm, this anime's got something special here. Alright? This anime's got something special. And, um, yeah. You can really say that the plot is, um, is halfway between Malines and Planchado. Alright, so I'm warning you guys, if you're not into animes that make you think, do not watch this. Alright, so, wow, that was a really, that was a, a most interesting pilot. It is both bizarre and disturbing, alright, so yeah, right now I'm gonna tell you guys, I am looking forward to the next episode. So, 
Sunny Boy Episode 1 You know, there's a legacy, uh, there's a legacy, there's, uh, well, Madhouse is actually leaving a legacy with this, um, with the more recent enemies they have, um, they have been putting out, but this one, yeah, you know, it's, Madhouse is behind this, Bakit? have you, have you guys seen the movie Perfect Blue? Yeah, it's one of the un- it's, it's one of those three movies that I collectively call the unholy trinity of dementia. Perfect Blue is one of the most disturbing movies of- one of the most disturbing anime movies ever. Right? It's- well, it just- it's uh, an illustration of how cruel the idol industry can be. Yeah, it's a it showed the dark side actually of the of the of the idol industry and well madhouse became famous for perfect blue and they're showing well signs of that uh signs of the animation done in that movie here in sunny boy uh yep madhouse because it took me back to perfect blue all right wow and and think that uh the pilot is this um weird and disturbing oh yeah only madhouse is capable of these kinds of animes all right i don't know i don't know pero medyo nawalan ako ng gana sa madhouse when they took on one punch man I say we all know one punch man was the most hyped anime of 2015 right and well it, it season one is a classic it's now it's now uh, it's now in the history books as a classic right and madhouse madhouse was behind that but at the same time parang, uh, i look back at it now because I think um, they probably did that for the money. They probably did that to uh, well, to well, to get themselves recognized by the mainstream. I even thought that Madhouse was was nuts when they took on one punch man but looks like they're looks like they're going back to their roots now with this right and wow consider me a fan of this animation studio again right because this because sunny boy because the pilot well, at least the pilot of sunny boy perfectly reminded me of perfect blue it's perfect blue all over again all right so yeah i'll be looking forward to the next episode and i'll probably enjoy reviewing this anime Bro. i'll probably enjoy reviewing this more than Higurashi sotsu based on just the pilot alone yeah so to all Higurashi fans, wag kayo magsiselos ha. Alright? Walang selosan. Trabaho lang to. So again, Sunny Boy, Episode 1. Pilot so good, it deserves another mic drop. A two mic drop, two thumbs up, mga lifestyle. But whoa! I think this is going. I think this is going to be the bad Sony boy will take on when it comes to teasers. It's not gonna do any of them, All right? So no teasers for the next episode, which makes 
which makes me more excited than ever. And wow, and simply looking forward to the next episode. So yun ang gagawin natin. Abangers for the next episode. Then when, then when it airs, we are gonna watch it and deep dive into it that, and deep dive into that one. Alright. So in the meantime, mga lifestyle. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest, alright? Ganda. Here's the uh, well. Let me let me run it down for you. Well, um, they found a way to defeat Jean, and nakagusto pa si Validas dito. <laughs> wow! All right. Branding Vanitas as an anti-hero is an understatement. Okay, would be an understatement because. Um, the way he did business here against Jean and um, you see Bird, see Birdo. Talagang mapapaisip ko kung kung bida ba talaga to o <laughs> All right, he's treading that line. Okay, he's treading that line. So uh, they they found a way to uh, to beat Jean, the the Hellfire Witch. All right. And well, there's only there's actually only one way to to beat her. In hostage, ang kanyang batang amo, si Luca. Well, which Noi did exactly, right? So I don't know. Then, well, ay nung lumaban yano eh, ay nung lumaban ni ni Jean, kasi hostage yung amo niya, right? Yeah, yeah that will, that will make you feel weak. Now, talaga, wow, eh, mukhang nabighani pa to si, si Vanitas kay Jean eh. Hinalikad pa! Enjoy na enjoy! Alright? So, um, nakata, well, actually nakatakas yung mag-amo. Then, sinabi ni Jean, I will kill you. I will kill you both. Eh, ang counterstatement naman, well, ang smack talk naman ni, ni Vanitas this time. Ganon? O sige? You, 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 you gotta come see me again? I'll be more than excited. Diyos ka. Ay, mukhang mukha nainlab, nainlab nga siya kay Jean. Alright? Grabe. Inalo pa nga niya ng kasali. <laughs> so, they were able to, um, well, through the two servants, through uh, Count Orlok's two servants na umispiya sa kanila, what, alam na ni Count Orlok na, what, to some degree, that the Book of Vanitas does exist. And he was actually holding it in the last episode. Right? So, sabi niya kasi, do sa ano, the Book has some power. Pero hindi niya in acknowledge as the Book of Vanitas. But, that's just says, um, a quarter of the way there to totally believing that the one that Vanitas has is the Book of Vanitas. Okay? So, Count Orlok asked Noi to um, to peer through Amelia's memories. Right? Kasi, ang sabi ni Vanitas, before before they, uh, before they contracted the disease, Sabi ng uh, sabi ng karamihan sa mga pasyente niya they all they well, actually they all said the same thing before the um, before before they actually had the disease they were um, they were surrounded in a fog then a parade showed, suddenly sh- out of the blue showed up tapos mayroon pang ghostly figure na wow okay it's super creepy so sinabi niya si charlatan yun now, hindi na matandaan ni Amelia. Which prompted Count Orlok to assign Noi to to peer th- to to peek through her to peek through Amelia's memories. Because he knows from what clan Noi comes from. 
Okay? The um, the RCBs the RCBs. Now, the RCBs clan specializes in mind reading by means of drinking another person's blood. Creepy, ano? Noy is an archivist. Alright? So, ginamit niya ang ability niya bilang archivist. Nalaman niya. Yan. Charlatan is real. At sinabi, sinabi pa ni Noy, he's doing this, he's doing this even to innocent vampires. I shall make him pay dearly. Yan ang pangako ni Noy. Then suddenly, his childhood friend comes in, si, um, uh, I forgot. I forgot that girl's name. But she comes from the Desad family, right? Uh, who, according to Count Orlok, is a clan known for its rude behavior. Because, sabi, sabi niya, the House of Desad's rude behavior predates your generation. <laughs> He's that old. Because, talaga alam niya, alam niya what, alam niya kung sino talagang what, alam niya mataga na niyang alam na ang mga Desad ay talagang angka na mga bastos to. Alright? So, well, isa lang napaki ni itong ng babaeng ito eh. What is that is to, well, separate Noy from Vanitas. Alam mo naman, well, alam mo naman ito si Vanitas. Sumunod. Alright? To, into that, uh, into that void which leads to, which leads to Altos. The actual home world of the, va- of the vampires. Which he calls Altos Paris. Alright, so that's where the episode ended. Now, that was actually the final scene. Alright, so you know, that's how the, uh, that's how the episode basically went down. Overall, yeah, it's a really good episode. Right, it's a really good episode. Um, let's talk about the pace first. So, um, it was properly paced. Okay, it was properly paced. Although, the, the, the first third of the episode, yeah, that was a tense moment. Kasi, ano na, well, we, we left them uh, figuring out a way to, to defeat Jean. She is the Hellfire Witch. She massacred 1,000 vampires during the war. Right? She massacred 1,000 vampires in in one fell swoop with that yung crimson gauntlet niya. Yun ang ginamit niya. So, yeah, it's a formidable weapon. And with her control and with her controlling it, susunog sila na buhay nito. So, maganda magandang ano eh. That was the only tense moment, right? The rest is well um, kumaga, investigation phase na on who this charlatan is. Okay? So, understandable naman yung pace. Understandable pala yung pacing ng episode. Yeah. Magigess mo ang buong story. Okay? Through the pacing. Flow naman. First gear shift is, um, yeah, you, I could, I can classify that as a gear shift. Yung kissing scene <laughs> ni Lavanitas at Jean. Oh my God. The way he grabbed, uh, the way he grabbed Jean just to kiss her. Uh, as, in, as, as in torrid kissing, ha? Huh? As in torrid kissing. Grabe. Wow. Now we know how much of a pervert Vanitas is. Okay. How much, uh, how much of both a pervert and a psycho he is? Talaga magda, ah, mapipilit na mong talongin ang anime na to eh. Ate Hero is, Ate Hero is a much less description for this guy. <laughs> Through that gear shift, you, you, it will, it will make you think that, it will make you think na, Ito ba talaga bida? Right? Second gear ship is when, well, um, is when Noi started this investigation through Amelia. So, kinagat. Ininom yung dugo. Um, 
Nagsimula nga siya sa ano eh, sa first meeting nila ni Vanitas. All right? Then um hindi, hindi, sabi niya hindi to. Hindi to memo nila gusto ko makita. Sige pa, sige pa, inom, inom. He, he was he kept on drinking Amelia's blood right there. Para lang para para lang ma-deep dive niya ang utak nito. Yan, and he did. He now knows what charlatan looks like. Ano na niya ang tunay na itsura nito? Talagang ang pake ni charlatan sirain ang true name ng isang vampire. Because what well, once you do that, a vampire dies. You know what? Yung ah uh, yung put a stake through its heart, ah uh, crucifix. No, this is this is probably the best way to kill a vampire. Uh, remove him remove him of his true name and charlatan knows how yun na nakita ni Noy right final gear shift came when uh, both Vanitas and Noy are now in Altos right isa na namang kagaguan ng ginawa ni Vanitas dito because nakakatawid pala siya between the human and vampire worlds through uh, In order for him not to be disintegrated by this void, all he has to do is to touch a vampire. Ito namang sinoy, kinuha siya sa kamay na ganun. O di! Save si Vanitas! Save si Vanitas! Alright? So, wow! Can't imagine how, 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 uh, how, how psychotic this hero is. So, these three gear shits that I saw, especially... The first, yeah, now, I mean all. All three of these gear shifts will play a role in future episodes. That's the way I see it. Pero pinaka-crucial dito is yung, um, pangalawa. Yung pangalawang gear shift. Because, Vanitas and Noy are up, will be up against a, um, an almost unseen enemy. All right? An almost unseen enemy here who walks on its own um targets its own meals and typically this typically destroys it by removing its true name. That's scary. If you're a vamp if you're a vampire, yep, that is scary. All right? So, yun, yun na nakita ko. Plot naman. Mm, planchado. Kasi, uh, the animators had to explain on how they, how they came up with this plan. Alright? So, medyo, medyo nag-backtrack tayo to the time when they were Uh, during the final scene of the last episode, yan, medyo nandun pa sa timeline na yun eh. Pinropose ni Vanitas na dapat i-hostage natin yung bata. At ikaw ang gag, sabi, ni, sabi niya kinoy, at ikaw ang gagawa nito. Dapat i-hostage yung bata para hindi makagalaw si Sean. What? That worked. That worked. Okay. Talk about terrorism. <laughs> All right. That worked. So, talagang, well, sinabi ko ng planchado kasi, well, there's an explainer to, there, there's a, uh, well, there's a method to Vanitas' madness in this episode. And that, um, that backtrack um, showed us why. Right? So, talagang, well, what he did here, was, yeah, it's probably forgivable. It's probably forgivable. Yeah, yun nga eh. Hindi naman nila, di naman nila sinaktan si Luke eh. Right? All they want was to hold him hostage para hindi, para hindi makaporma si Sean. Right? That's the only way. That, that, that's the only logical way you should do. Yeah, so, tama lang yung, tama lang yung plot. Okay? Plansyado siya. So, there's no, not, not much, um, it's not that complicated. Okay? There's no silly backstories here, not even not even a sleeper moment. Right? Talagang planchado yung plot. Right? Magigets mo. Even if you're a um even if you just started out watching 
this anime from wherever you are okay so yeah pace flow and plot yeah they came together for this episode Talagang, even the uh, even the funny moments they're in the right place right they're, they're in the right place Pero ang natawa ko doon sa ano eh, sa sinabi ni, ni Count Orlock eh, yung, yung kapastusan ng, ng babaeng ito, his, um, her family is known for that. Even, uh, it dates way back, alright? Their rude behavior dates way back. Alright, doon ako natawa sa, sa sinabi ni Count Orlock eh. Doon ako talaga natawa. So, The Case Study of Vanitas, Episode 3, Deserve. Two thumbs up. Now, um, what shall we discuss more? Um, excuse me. Um, the vampire world, okay, in this anime is wow. It's more it was a, it was more elegant than I thought. All right? Kasi there are there are hierarchies uh, somewhat complicated hierar- hierarchies and um when you're when you're a teacher you're held in high esteem to to most nobles. Okay? Count Kilala, kilala, kilala pala ni Count Orlock ang teacher ni ang, ang ang teacher ni Noy. Ang teacher kasi ni Noy, lolo ng batang ng babaeng sinasabi ko na bastos. All right. So, yeah. Let we can we can say we can safely con- conclude that Count Orlock knows the house of Desa really well. So, kasi, sum, sum, sumulad daw sa kanya ang teacher ni Noy regarding this. Kasi, uh, regarding the investigation. Also, that, please, um, please, please, of, please assist him while he's in Paris. So, Count Orlock obliged. That, that's practically one noble to another. That's practically one noble to another. Alright? So, kaya siya, well, kaya, Kaya sila, kaya, kaya sila pinabaya ang mag, mag-stay na lang sa hotel na yon ng libre. Well, because Count Orlock owns that hotel. Yun, meron, meron pa nga sa pinabibigay na note sa sa administrator ng hotel. Pinabibigay niya kay Vanitas. Siguro nakalagay doon. Please, um, accommodate, siguro, siguro, siguro ha, this is what, this is what, this is my guess only. Please assist them while they're in Paris. While they're while they're st- while they're staying here, okay. Please attend to their needs. Parang ganon yan. So, yeah, we can safely assume now that they have a powerful ally in Count Orlock, in uh, in stopping in stopping whatever force is behind all these curse bearers. All right. Chaka, pinanggit na ni Vanitas dito. Okay, so you keeping an eye on us? Good. All the more, well, if you're gonna take in more curse bearers, I won't have, um, I won't exert much effort now in looking for patients. So you can say that it's a, um, it's a win-win situation. It's a win. It's a yeah. It's a it's a two-way deal now between Vanitas and, and Orlock. Yeah? You can say that. <laughs> deep dive, alright? This anime has a deep dive factor. And we just and we just deep dive into one episode. So yeah, it's a good start. Right? It's a good start. So again, the case study of Vanitas episode I don't know, five. Three? <laughs> two thumbs up. So, um, title of the next episode has been teasered. 
It's in French. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it means. Kaya, abangan sa nang tayo for the next episode so that we can deep dive into that naman. Alright mga ka-lifestyle? So in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews here in this digest. Alright? Whoa! Ooh! All right. Uh, I'm so excited to um to summarize this episode. Well, um, what you call this? Ryuhei um gets well um we well basically we got to know one of uh Ryuhei's acquaintances here. See, si, see si Ibusaki, right? Who's uh, who's both beauty and brains? Yun nga lang. She's being raised in a very violent household, right? Her dad is a piece of shit, while her mother is very submissive, right? I really hate these kinds of people. Okay. Wife beater ang tatay niya. Inaturing ng police pa naman to. Right? So yeah. It's a it's a really toxic environment to uh, to be raised in. Sayang. Pero uh, well, she almost went to that dark path when she uh, she acquired this drug. Yeah, illegal drug ito. Yeah, it's called it's called in the anime the dream supplement. Nung tinik niya naging trauma siya rito. All right? So we now know that you don't have to play the game uh, Rise of Dragons to become a Tromery. All you have to do is take this drug. Instant Tromery ka na. Kasi ang nag-fuel sa... Ang trigger yata sa drug nito para, para gawin kang Tromery, tromery is your... Um, I think whatever negative wish you have, yan. Yan ang, yan ang trigger niyan. Alright? So, of course, naging tromery siya. E di na-alerto ang lahat ng knocker up. Especially si Ryuhei. So, they respond to the scene. At nakita na ng, uy! Sabi ni Ryuhei, uy! Kakilala ko to ah! Teka muna! So, that was, that was, that was what Ryuhei was thinking. So, he, uh, he thought of a plan at hindi na, nakiusap muna siya sa dalawa niya kasama, dalawa niya kasama na si Jessica at si, um, Aruto na huwag mo na makialam right so he's trying desperately to convince Ibusaki to to drop this tromery to drop this tromery shell and um yeah he actually motivated her to to um to break free of this addiction at yun lo and behold a new knocker up is born <laughs> right Eh, yung kasama nila si Tris, yung pusa, um, hindi, he, he wasn't surprised at what happened. Kasi, um, her, I think her clear intentions made her what she is now. Yun ang pagkaka-deduce ni, ni Tris. Alright? So, yep! A new member, new member of the team. Tapos, um, dumating itong isa, si, I, I forgot her name eh, yung Kikai. Kinagad bigla ni Tris kasi meron siya na suspecha. And sabi niya, Oh, kinagad, baka, baka magkasakit ako sa'yo. G- Gano'n pa reaction eh, Kikai din, Kikai din kung mag-react sa, Kikai din kung mag-react, kung mag-react sa sakit ito eh. I, I forgot her name eh. Ah, God, ano sa, sa dami naman nire-review ang, ah, Sa mga, sa mga nire-review kong animes, nakakalimuto ko mga names sila. Alright? So, final scene. Well, basically, Ibusaki did something about her father. Alright? So, siya mismo ang nag, um, siya mismo ang nag-request sa nanay niya na makipag-divorce na rito sa tatay niya. Siyempre, nagalit ang tatay. And, he's about to hit her. Bumu- binunod niya yung phone niyang ganun. Si Ibu... Si Ibusaki, ni-replay yung recording. Hmm. He is actually swearing at his wife. Yun. 
Ebidensya na yun for divorce. Ebidensya na yun. So, hindi na nakaangal yung tatay. Now, he, 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 well, he, he even threatened not to sign not to sign the papers. Eh, ito naman, ito naman ang ibinato ng anak niya sa kanya. Yeah. Hey, douchebag, you deserve it. <laughs> Douchebags like you need a reality check like that. Alright? Because sooner or later, you yourself will be caught. So, yun. So, yeah, she, she just stood up. She just stood up. She stood up against something wrong. Yeah. Mali na itong ginagawa. Mali na itong ginagawa naman naman natin eh. So, took it upon herself to, to, to just just save her mother. Mabait na. Mabait na anak. Alright? Mabait siya anak in my book. Overall, it's a damn good episode. Wow! Okay? So, okay. Uh, let's, let's, um, uh, let's break this down ARD style, alright? Pace! Maayos ang pacing. Right? It is, well, the fast-paced parts, um, were slow enough for us to deep dive in. Alright, kasi, I, sorry. Got too excited. Now, the pacing of this episode was, um, yeah, understandable. Because, well, because the fast-paced part, yung naging tromery si Ibusaki, yeah, it has to be fast-paced. Pero, medyo nag-slow down kasi nag-iba ng plano ang mga knocker up because of Ryuhei. So, yun, talagang, talagang, ano eh, as much as, well, it's obvious, as much as possible, he doesn't want to kill. He doesn't want to kill si Ryuhei. Pero, he, he has, he is strong enough, okay? He's strong enough to be a warrior. So, kinunvisa talaga si Ibu sa akin na, huwag mo nang gawin ito. Right? You are not this. You can, you can be strong, but not this way. So, yun, yun ang ini-impart niya kay Ibu, i, kay Ibu sa akin while, she, while, yeah, while he was being, while, while, while he was being, while he was, uh, being knocked around silly. <laughs> while he was being knocked around silly. Right? Nangyari ba ito sa front porch lang? Hindi. Sa, sa buka na pa ng bahay nila, Ibusaki. Ni, ni Ibusaki. So, yun. Nakita rin tuloy na tatay niya. Right? So, pero, right after the, uh, what, 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 what has happened, um, the father has no recollection of it. Right? Siguro any, um, I think any witnesses, or any means of recording the event, yeah, it gets deleted automatically. Parang parang ganon yun eh. I, I don't know what, I don't know what outrageous technology is behind this, but I really want to know. All right. So yeah, maganda. So yeah, understandable and pacing. All right. Because well, we we were introduced to a new member of the team, and wow, did she become a knocker up in the weirdest way, so far. Okay. Flo naman. What? Um, first gear ship was uh, was that scene when yeah when um when we when we first saw um the the living the the living space that at Ibosaki is in. Yep, absolutely toxic, right? Lalo na nung pumasok na siya sa kwarto dun, dun, dun sinimo ng bugbugin ni, ng tatay niya, nanay niya. Right? Well, you, you, you actually don't have to, to make a visual of that. Okay? Audio pa lang, alam mo na. So, yeah. He, he's not just a douchebag, okay? He's a, he's a piece of shit. Okay? He's a piece of shit. Right? And I'm, and I'm so glad Ibosaki took him out. Right through yeah through legal means. You don't threaten me. I will threaten you first. So yeah, that that's a gear shift, okay? It's a socially relevant gear shift, okay? Kaya ako ginawang 
Kaya ako nakita to as gear shift eh. Because it actually happens in real life. Okay? Kids out there are being raised in toxic environments. Okay? Pinakita lang ng episode na to. That, that these kinds of living spaces are real. Alright? Hindi dapat baliwalain to. So, well, if you're... Um, so, if you know someone who, who is living in this kind of an environment, offer help. Okay? Offer help in, in any way you can. Makatulong ka lang. Alright? Second gear shift is when, yeah, when Ibusaki took that, uh, took that dream supplement. Halatang yeah, illegal drug eh. Halatang droga eh. Kasi kinuha lang yan. Iniwan lang ng, iniwan lang ng dealer niya doon sa isang, sa isang bush eh. Na katapat ng isang, I think, movie theater yata yun. Alright. So yeah, that's the gear shift. The gear shift that turned her into a tromery. Alright. Final gear shift is when, um, yeah. Is when she finally got her power, stood up against her father for for everything that he has done wrong. Yeah, and just um proverbially told him to, yeah, to to go fuck himself, okay? Her mother's getting a divorce. Yeah, and it's guro baka baka tumayo pa nga siyang testigo eh. Baka tumayo pa nga siyang testigo eh sa divorce proceedings eh. Right? In Japan, there in Japan there's divorce. Yeah. But unfortunately here in the Philippines, nope, we only got uh, we only got annulment here. Unfortunately. Right? So those three gear shifts will play a role uh, in future episodes of this anime. Kasi it's all it's all about the it's all about the newest member of the team, si Ibusaki. On um, on what motivates her now in being now that she's a knocker up. You can you can trace back to this episode. You can trace it back to this episode. All right, on especially on how uh, Ryuhei helped her to, to get her out of that. All right, talagang wow. Okay. Plot wise, malinis, malinis. Because um, my book, my um. The entire episode got my entire attention because naka-focus lang sa is- sa 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 isang tao lang eh, sa isang character on how she um yeah, on how she was both a tromere and a knocker up in the same night. All right? So, kumbaga yeah, it was a transformation episode for her both physically, mentally and even yeah, even emotionally. Right? Uh, wow. Malinis talaga ang plot nito. Talagang yung focus mo talagang dun sa dun ng kiibosaki. Talagang you you will see what um what problems was she what problems was she having before she became a knocker up and what will be her motivation now that she's a knocker up. Right? Makita man driving force the driving force now behind her psyche. Like I said a while ago in the when we talked about the flow, you can go back to, to this episode on how Ibusaki became uh, a knocker up. Right? Yeah. Pace, flow, and plot. Yep. They really came together in this episode. They really came together. <sighs> Excuse me. So this side dramedy, the animation episode two. You see, boy, two thumbs up, two thumbs up. I'll give you another reason why. Because well, um, never have I seen an episode of a cyberpunk anime be as empowering as this. All right. Well, in all my years as a cyberpunk fan, okay. I've never seen anything, I've never seen an episode so empowering as this. Kasi, okay, toxic environments are a real life thing. And abusive, um, abusive spouses, abusive parents, yeah. 
They're all they're all part of the territory. And what as well um it's about time that we should become responsible outsiders. All right? It's about time we should become out, uh, responsible outsiders. If we have friends, people close to us that are living in these kinds of um living in these kinds of environments, don't just be content when someone when some of them tell you to stay out of this. Ask them, oh, what are you gonna do? Ganun lang yun. What you gonna do? You know, kung kaibigan talaga kayo sa, sa biktimang ito, it is not your job not to, um, not to just stand around and wait for something bad to happen. Right? If you see the if you see red flags, do what you have to do. Do what you have to do. It's probably the message this episode is imparting to us. Well, Ryuhei did something. Sinasuggest na nila nila Jessica at Aro to na patayin na to eh. Na itumba na tuluyan na to. But <clears throat> but um Ryuhei said no. I know this girl. Let me do something about it. So, uh, pinabayaan muna. Pinabayaan muna ng dalawang bata. Si Ryuhei. And yeah, Ryuhei was successful. Okay? Ryuhei was successful. And, wow! Okay? Not only was she, was, was she broken free from being a tromery, she became a knocker-up right there. Talagang siguro, it was her destiny, it was, it was her destiny to become a knocker-up. It only needed a trigger as um, as huge as this para lumabas yun. <sighs> wow. Okay. Probably the most empowering cyberpunk episode I have yeah, I've ever seen. So again, this I Tromery the animation episode 2 two thumbs up. Another So, well, next episode has been teasered. Hindi na pala siya into the title mag-teaser. Alright. So, it now involves the Kikai girl. Right? Pero, uh, I don't want to trust it yet. Kasi, you know how, you know how teasers work. Okay. They, they can jumble the scenes. They can jumble the scenes. Alright? So, all we have to do is wait for next week and watch this, and watch that episode. Right? So in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews, Maka Lifestyle. Whoa! All right. Before we, be, uh, before you start arguing with me with my with my wow, right? Let's go over the summary first of this episode. So, nagumpisa ang episode with Takemichi racking his brain as to how. Um, as to how he's going to fulfill his end of his deal with Mikey, which is to to bring Baji back into Toman, as he's about to go to So, tinulungan siya ng ng yung talagang barkada niya as to what Toman's organizational structure looks like. Kasi meron silang dun sa barkada nila meron silang gang expert. Okay, ito yung naglecture <laughs> binlock board pa nga eh. Then, in the middle of their discussion, in comes Kazutora. Alright? Now, remember, Kazutora is a founding member of Toman. Hindi ba siya talaga kilala ni Mikey? Because, the, when the time this all happened, wala pa si Kazutora sa eksena. Hindi, wala na sa eksena si Kazutora. Now, nakilala pala, kilala pala siya ni, ni Kazutora. So, uh, in-invite siya sa tignan ng Valhalla. Okay, sumama naman siya. Kasi, naalala niyo tuloy na he's doing now, he's now doing all this for, for Hina. Para naman protektahan siya. So, sama siya. Eh, yun pala, member na pala ng Valhalla si Kasutora. And of course, nandun din si Hanma. 
All right? Who's now? Who's now the acting co- who is the acting commander of Valhalla? Sinabi ni sa kanya ng barkad ng nung kawarkada niya noon na the real commander has no face. Walang nakakakilala dito. So, um, talagang tumatayo sa harap ng sa harap ng gang ay si Hanma. Right? So that's one that's one mystery that needs to be solved. All right? But anyway, so um gagawin pala siyang witness ni Kasutora para ma-initiate na into Toman si Baji. So, isa na niya, oh, tinanong si t- tinanong ni Hanma si Takinichi. Ano bang sinabi nito sa huling huling meeting ng Toman? Eh, sinabi naman ni Takimichi ang totoo. Then, kinunsot ni Hanma si Kasutora. Sabi naman ni Kasutora, I think that's enough. He's already proven he's already proven his worth kasi mayroong pinabugbog sa kanyang ano eh. Uh, actu- ang binugbog niya na ito yung vice captain niya. Okay? Remember, Baji is the captain of the fir- of Toman's first division. Second in command niya dito, yung binugbog niya rito. Alright? Just to prove his loyalty to Valhalla. Ngayon, they brought in Takimichi as a witness. Kung talagang, talagang tumiwalag na sa Toman. Ayun, sinabi naman ni Takimichi ang totoo. But, the moment they accepted Baji into Valhalla, sinabi ni Takimichi, Teka muna! Teka! Oh! Baji! Founding member ka ng Toman, di ba? So, what? Kinounter Kinounter statement naman siya ni Baji. Hindi ba Hindi ba Teka Porket founding member ako ng Toman Hindi ko na sila pwedeng Hindi ko na sila pwedeng try to rin You're mistaken Ooh. Alright Final scene So Ikinuwent Sinimula ng ikwento ni Baji Ang pinagmulan ng galit niya kay Mikey Alright so, pero hindi tinapos yung backstory niya. Binitin tayo. Right? That's how you that's how you make a backstory interesting, right? Ibitin mo sa gitna. Ha? Overall, it's a fuck another fucking good episode from this anime. <laughs> Kahit walang well, the, uh, the only uh, the only bloodshed we've seen here is when when Baji was beating was beating the shit out of his former vice captain. All right, yun lang to prove his loyal to prove his to prove his, to prove his uh, his intent with Valhalla. Yun lang naman na ko rito eh. But pace, let's do it ARD style, okay? Pace, magandang pacing. All right, kasi. Hindi mo alam kung nung kuno barang ni Kasutora dito eh. Right? Ganun sila ni Baji eh. Sila talaga ang mag-best friend eh. Baji tsaka si Kasutora. Right? So when Kasutora left Toman, eh parang sumunod na rin si Baji. Okay? And we don't exactly know how Kasutora um came to know Takemichi. Ba't yung biglang inakal si Takimichi nung nakita niya? Alright? So, talagang... Wow! Ano to? Parang, parang, parang matagal mo nang kilala si Takimichi ah. Bakoy nakap, nakap ng ganun. Alright? So, well... In order for... Um, yeah, well, in order for Takimichi to, to fulfill his end of the bargain, syempre, kailangan sumama siya. This... This was his chance to... To to pull Baji into Toman again to pull Baji back into Toman all right so the pacing will uh, will make you go th- talagang really made me go through what the characters are going through in this episode talagang wow right then uh, by the time nandun na sila sa headquarters ng Valhalla yeah, it's it's a rundown it's a rundown video arcade eh. pero nandun yung logo nila sa harap sa bukana yung logo ng Valhalla. Talagang you could feel the you could feel the air thinning na. Okay? Nagiging tense na yung sitwasyon. <laughs> Nagiging tense na yung sitwasyon kasi I think everybody in Valhalla now knows that 
Takemichi is part of Toman. Alright? Kasi di, these, these, these gangs kasi, they keep tabs on new members. Alright? Kasi yan ang, yan, ang, yan ang ipinaparating sa atin ng, ng anime na to. That's how, that's how gangs work in Japan. May, kung may bagong member, inaalam nila yung, yung pangalan, lifestyle, at kung saan nakatira. Alright? At kung saan, they, can, yeah, they, even want, they even go to great lengths as, as to kung saan, kung, kung, na, kung saan ka nakatira, yung address mo. Okay? So, the pacing will make you, yeah, will make you um, experience that. Okay? Because that's what that's what the pace does. That's what the pace must do to to a viewer. Kaya, pace is one of my categories. Eh. Now, flow naman. First gear shift. Of course, nung nakita ni Kasutora si Takimichi. Alright? Pati, pati yung barkada ni Takimichi, nagulat eh. Sabi ko, sabi niya, Uy! Uy! Cut na sa balala yan, Takimichi! Para mo nakilala yan! Eh, gulat nila. Eh, gulat na. Gulat din ni Takimichi. He doesn't know Kasutora. Okay? He doesn't know him. Ang kilala lang niya, sa Toman, si Mikey, of course. Si Draken, of course. Okay? Si Mitsuya, uh, who is, whom, whom is now his captain. Kasi, nilagay siya ni Mikey sa second division ni Mitsuya. Okay? He's now, kumaga, yan, kumaga, subordinate na siya ni, ni Mitsuya ngayon. And of course, si, si Pe, tsaka si Pa, yung nakulong, yung nakapatay. Right? Yan, kilala ni Takemichi yon. So, talagang, he has no idea who, who Kasutora is. So, na-realize niya, na-realize lang niya later on in the episode na, this was, now this is the sixth founding member of Toman. Kasi ibang-ibang itsura ni Kasutora dun sa picture. Hindi ba siya yung... Yung magulong buhok, tapos may streaks, may blonde streaks. Doon, nakapompador siya talaga, tapos krukat, tapos naka parang mohawk style sa picture. Talagang hindi niya nakilala. So, second gear shift is when, well, is when he actually saw Baji beating the shit out of his former vice captain. So, tinanong niya si Kasutora, Uy, ano, ano nangyayari dito? Eh, in-explain naman ni Kasutora, Valhalla is testing Baji's resolve. Kaya, ito, ito siya ngayon. Binubugbog yung vice captain niya. So, <laughs> talaga nasak si Takimichi. Takimichi was shocked. Okay? Then, the final gear shift is of course, when Baji started telling his backstory. Right? Na, nabitin. Na talaga binitin ng animators. Alright? That's how... That's how you make a backstory interesting. Alright? Ibitin mo. Ibitin mo. That was a good call by uh, by Leiden Films. Okay? That was a good call. So, these three gear shifts, okay? These are all important gear shifts. It will, it may not serve its purpose in this episode, but it will uh, in the final remaining episodes of this anime. Alright, yun ang, yun ang feeling ko rito. That's my, that's, my, uh, that's my prediction here. Especially yung... Uh, yung, yung... Yung huli. The final gear shift. Ngayon, malalaman na rin ni Takimichi kung bakit... Um, bakit ganun na lang ang ganit ni Kasutora at ni Baji kay Mikey. Alright? Kung bakit matagal na pinaplano ni Baji na na itumba si Mikey. Right? Like, like I'm talking about the manga here. No, <laughs> I'm not talking about the manga. I'm talking about the anime. Alright? Let's be clear on that. Now, plot-wise, Malinis. Alright? Malinis. Even though it has a, a, a small backstory scene, uh, it has a short backstory scene, Malinis pa rin ang plot. Because, it, because, um, that episode really, made us experience what Takimichi is going through. Dito ko talaga nararamdam, nararamdaman yung ano eh, on how, how tense probably Takimichi is. Kasi, pupunta siya sa pugad ng kalaban eh. Alright? Pupunta siya sa, sa pugad ng kalaban eh. Anytime, 
anytime pwede siyang kuyugin doon anytime pwede siyang itumba right kasi there's a there's a 60% chance now that Valhalla now that Valhalla knows that he is now part of Toman nakinuna ni siya ng Toman right so <laughs> wow talaga malinis ang plot ng episode na to so Another great episode from this anime. Right? Light and Films continues to over-deliver with this anime. Talagang hats off ako. Right? So, Tokyo Revengers episode 15. Easy pa yun. <laughs> Two thumbs up. Siyempre. Two thumbs up. Light and Films is, is known for other animes. The most recent one before... Before this was Cells at Work called Black, right? I've reviewed that, right? I have reviewed that. Now if you don't now if you don't believe me, check out volume 3. Right? Nandoon 'yon. I reviewed that during volume 3 of the ARD. Iba yung animation iba yung animation dito sa Tokyo Revengers compared to Cells at Work called Black. All right? Parang yeah, slightly dip the animation here is slightly different than there. Which well well, I, I'm not into reviewing animations per se, alright? Pero, I think, uh, yeah, it totally captures what, uh, what, if you're, if you're a fan of the Tokyo Revengers manga, you would find this almost identical to the anime. Will Mikey be prepared to, uh, is Mikey uh, ready enough to hear Baji's backstory, alright? The main reason why he wants Mikey dead. Okay? Kahit si Kasutora. So, well, basically, Valhalla is capitalizing on this kasi, uh, biro nyo ba naman? They have the two, uh, two of the, two of the founding members of the Tokyo Manji Gang. Dumifex sa kanila. And talagang, plano, plano nila talagang itumba ang Toman. Ang Valhalla. Alright? So, wow. Alright? But, rest... But, hey. Here is our assurance when it comes to Tokyo Revengers. Business has been picking up by the episode since... Since the second half of the run started. Particularly when Takimichi... Takimichi punched Kisaki in the face. Alright? So, doon talaga... Doon talaga naging tense all throughout, uh, all throughout this uh, second half. So, this one's no different. <laughs> this one's no different because Takimichi is basically in enemy territory. Alright? Anything can happen to him. Anything can happen to him. Pero, he just really wants to protect Hina. That's why he's doing this. And, he wants Kisaki out of Toman. Kasi yun ang... You know, deal niya kay Mikey. Eh. If I do this, you you kick Kisaki out of Toman. Pumayag naman si Mikey. Pumayag si Mikey. Siguro gano'n na gano'n na talaga yung uh, gano'n na talaga ang ang tunay ni Mikey kay Takemichi, talagang kaibigan na. And he is more than willing to uh, to accept this offer. It for Probably, for Mikey, this is reasonable. This is reasonable. Alright? So, well, pro- well, we... We don't know if... Um, Mikey now has that inkling that... That what he wants Takemichi to do is dangerous. So, yeah, probably. If he accomplishes this, sige. Kisaki is out of Toman. Ako mismo sisipa sa kanya. Sabi niya ganun. In essence, yun ang sinasabi niya. Ako mismo sisipa sa kanya. So again, Tokyo Revengers Episode 15. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime, mga lifestyle. Well, in typical Revengers fashion, no teasers. <laughs> Pero, binitin tayo ng episode na to. Kaya, well, that's how you run a backstory. Ibitin mo sa huli. So that 
the audience will now will now be motivated to watch the next episode kasi yun ang continuation. Kaya, yun ang dapat natin gawin. Alright? So, in the meantime, mga ka-lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Alright? Saan ko yan? Wow! Alright. Well, uh, the third sibling now uh, challenges for for a duel. All right, her name is Yuka. Okay, si Yuka. Atang atang hinamo niya mismo ay si Romin. Right, so duel actually went back and forth. All right, until um, Yuka found. Uh, found the right combo to beat Romin. Yup, talo si Romin dito. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, basically, and a lot of fan service moments. Okay, uh, I, I wasn't I wasn't actually paying attention to the to the to the uh, to the dual scene. Alright, to tell you honestly, mga lifestyle, I was paying attention to the fan service moments that um that. That came about. That came about in this episode, right? Final scene. What? Um, this you, this you guy, yung isang kapat, yung isang sibling. Uh, he's up to his, he's up to his um very secret, to his secret lab. At uh, kakon siya pa yung helmet. And the helmet said, just said, this card is actually usable for Rush Duels. Bo, ano kaya yung card yon? Ano kaya yung card yun? Alright, so... Very intriguing. Alright, very intriguing. Overall, it's a really good episode. Alright, it's a really good episode. Pace. Biniti ko pa kayo, no? Okay. Well, the pacing of this episode is the u- the usual vintage Yu-Gi-Oh! Right? The pace picks up during a dual scene. Right, so gumamit pa ka ng cards ni Luke si Romine. Eh. Binigay sa kanya ni Luke para gamitin. Kaya pala gina, kaya pala pinagamit ni Luke yung mga cards niya, yung tatlo, kasi puro fire yun, puro fire pala. Right, so it has a chance against Yuka's deck, kasi puro fire attribute yung mga yung ginamit mga ginamit ni Yuka rito. Right, it's obvious. Puro fire. So now the pace, um, well, compared to uh, compared to the last episode, I like the I like this one's pacing even. Uh, I like this. I like the pacing of this episode much uh, much more. Okay, mas mas maganda to. Mas maganda yung pacing niya. Bakit? Kasi kung baga, the first third of the episode built up to the dual scene. Right? Kung baga eh, um, what you call this? Plano pala ng yukang ito na na kumuha ng challenger dun sa mga magta tryouts for the baseball team. Kaya pala siya bumili ng baseball team. Kung sino ang top performer sa tryouts na yun, yun ang hahamunin niya. That's the way I see it here. Eh, ang, lagi, ang top performer dito, si Romin pa. Alright? And, nalaman pala ng, ng mga Go siblings na kasali ang buong Rush Duel Club sa tryouts. So, yeah, that, um, that, that, that alarmed them a bit. Okay? That alarmed them a bit. So, flow naman. Well, first gear shift was when, um, look, uh, announced to the entire Rush Duel Club that na, that he has already entered them into the pro baseball team's tryouts. Sabi ni Yuga, wala kong kalam alam sa baseball. Hoy, ba't mo ko sinali? <laughs> ba't mo ko sinali dyan? Si Wob. I don't know why, but because he wanted to, um, he wanted to be the king of bases stealing eh. I, I, Pwede sana, siya na lang, siya na lang nag-try out. <laughs> diba? Dinami pa niyang buong Rush Duel Club. Kaya ayun, kawawa si Yuga sa tryouts. 
Right? Nakita pa kabano niya sa sports. Right? We all we all saw here how much how how um how big time he sucks at sports si Yuga. All right? There go. Wow. All right? It's it's mind-boggling. <laughs> it's mind-boggling. All right? It's mind-boggling. Second gear shift is when of course Yuka challenged Romin. Right? So that was the uh, that was the second gear shift here. Well, if he if we didn't have that gear shift, we wouldn't have any duel, di ba? Hinamon eh. Yung isa naman tinanggap yung hamon. Yung lang naman yun eh. Right? Final gear shift is when, well, it's, it's during the final scene. Alright? I got really curious as to what, as to what this card is. Alright? Mukhang, mukhang sinister ang binabalak ng, ng yung ito. Alright? And the helmet said na, Pwede gamitin sa Rush Duel ang card, that, ang card na to. Is that? Hmm. Is that card too powerful to be, to be close enough to becoming illegal in Rush Duels? Is it that powerful? Hmm. Really makes you think. Kaya ako tinawag na gear shift eh. Really made me think. Ano kaya ang card dito? Ano kaya ang card dito? Right? Will it give? Will it give me the, the surprise revolver gave me in Yu-Gi-Oh Reigns when he first used Mirror Force against um against? Uh, Alam mo pangalan nun? Nakalimot ako yung nakalimot ako yung pangalan ng duelist na yun eh. Because what? Well, because basically, Link monsters um cannot assume defense position. Sila lang ang monsters na, na hindi pa ding mag na hindi pwedeng mag-defense position. So, Mirror Force is perfect against them. So, yun, ginamit ni... Ginamit ni Revolver ngayon. Dito sa Duelist na to. It was the first time Mirror Force made its... Uh, first first in a long time that Mirror Force made its appearance in a Yu-Gi-Oh! series. The last time was, ano pa? Was, uh, I think, GX pa. Alright? Wow! <laughs> that that gear shift really made me think and it made me go back to Yu-Gi-Oh Vrains. Okay? Yeah, you could say it's a fan service moment. Yeah. So this um the final gear shift will will definitely play a role in future episodes. Right? I think um the build up towards this card's identity is now well it's now big enough. Okay? Talaga like, well Everybody wants to know what 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 this card is all about. What this card is, na na pweding na pweding sumira sa rush duels or uh what you call this or make its user the most dominant player in the game, right? Yeah, na intriga talaga ako sa gearship na to. Plot naman. Hmm. Malinis. Right, Malinis. That's it. There were no side stories or even sleep uh, or even sleeper moments. Okay, there there were no side stories or sleeper moments in this episode. Kaya yung plot halata Malinis talaga because um uh, my focus okay my focus talaga was on not just on not just the duel scene but the entire episode as well. All right, because. Well, we all know, okay, if you haven't seen the episode yet, we all know that Roman lost. So, isang, uh, isang armament ang hindi natanggal. So that's, the be- so, that's the only reason I can give you guys on why the plot is clean. The plot is why, what I can call clean. Kasi, talagang buong, um, there were no, there were no complicated scenes, actually. Just, um, Yuka's ploy to bring out the top performer and challenge them to a duel. Alright? Ayun nga, nagkataon nga si Romin. So, eh, well, after beating her, Yuka actually, Yuka is actually recruiting Romin to her pro baseball team. Pinapapirma niya, pinapapirma na niya sa kontrata niya. Pinapapirma na niya sa kontrata. Eh, ayun naman ni Romin. 
I own an IL. So, well, yeah, it's another great episode from this anime. It's another great episode from from Sevens, right? But I'm but mind you guys, if you're not if you're not familiar with the Yu-Gi-Oh franchise, I strongly suggest you do not don't watch Sevens yet. In fact, watch Duel Monsters muna. All right? Para maintindihan niyo kung um bakit there are a lot of fan service moments here. There are a lot of uh well, the rules have changed in this anime. That's why also in real life we also have the rush duel format. All right? So, Yu-Gi-Oh 7's episode 56 Yes, sir. Thumbs up. Let's talk about the fan service moments now. All right. This is this is. This is. Medyo inex medyo inexpress ko na nga yung analysis and rating ko kanine because I want to talk about the fan service moments here. Now, Yuka's deck comprises of basically three archetypes. Zubaba, Gagaga, and Achacha. Ito rin yung tatlong archetype na ginagamit ni Yuma sa Zexal. Right? Pero yung kanya, baseball themed. <laughs> Now, her ace monster looks a lot. Looks like a, um, a, um, a pro baseball version of Utopia. Right? I'm gonna show you what the original Utopia looks like. All right. Dale. After years of searching, here it is. There, it is. that's the one. The baseball version of this monster in in this episode. Well, he had baseball bats for wings. <laughs> At saka, hindi ispaden kanya baseball bat talaga. <laughs> Right, so one last look. This is my copy of Utopia. Right there. I collect cards of uh, I get I collect cards of main pro tags. Yeah, aside from banned cards. So this is the main pro tags. This is the main protagonist. Uh, uh, AC HDU yeah HDU ma ito Zexal. Now the only ones I don't have right now are. Uh, Playmakers, um, Deco Talker, and of course uh, Yuga's Seven Sword Magician. All right? Maybe your, maybe your, uh, maybe your, maybe your tips can help. So, but that's not the only fan service moment here. All right. The um, uh, what you call this? Gagaga outfielder. Yeah, it looked a lot like Gagaga magician. Right? Pero ginawa siyang parang ano lang eh? Ginawa siyang talagang baseball style na get up. Pero you can easily tell that that it that, that it's a um, rip off of Gagaga magician. But I love the fan service moments uh, this anime brings to us. Okay. This anime brings to all the Yu-Gi-Oh fans, right? Finally, okay. Finally, Zexal has been given its fan service moments. All right, it has been given its fan service moments. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> so again, Yu-Gi-Oh Sevens episode fifty-six. Two thumbs up. Another fan service. Two thumbs up. So, what? Um, yeah. Next episode has been teasered, and I know I don't really trust it. All right. So, ano ga? Ano dapat natin gawin? Wait for next week and watch that episode so that we can, well, uh, deep dive into it. All right. In the meantime, enjoy the other reviews. Impressive. 
ito kasi nangyari dyan. Um, the girl that uh, suddenly was talking talking Kimmy's shirt from behind is actually a famous idol singer named uh, named Yui. Right? So she commissions uh, Kimmy and the now legendary detective si Nagisa. Right? Nagisa has finally uh, she just took it upon herself to to be to pose as the legendary detective because ang kanya kasi ayaw pa rin tawagin uh, no one no one no. Kimmy doesn't want to be called a detective sidekick yan pwede pwede daw so like she just took it upon herself to uh, to pose as the legendary detective So, silang dalawang kinomission ni Yui para uh, bantayan o hulihin yung magnanako sa family heirloom nila. Okay. It's called Miracle Sapphire. Wow. And considering she's a, she's a famous idol. Alright. So, that broadens the, the list of suspects even more. Okay, so it's quite a challenge right now for for both Kimi and Nagisa. Okay, but um, well, they had their own way of immersing into the case. Kimi, of course, yeah, total immersion, she. I say that's that's what he learned from from siesta. Si ano naman si si Nagisa. She only does her research up front. You up front lang na due diligence. Okay. Final scene. Well, while they were watching Yui rehearse, someone attacked her. Right? Then, took off. So, siyempre, hinabol ng ano, hinabol ng event security. And, sinabi ni, well, sinadjust ni Kimi na, Uh, kay Yui na ipakita sa kanya ang bomb backstage after this. So, while she, while he, um, offered his help to, to, uh, offered his hand to help Kimi up. And I think he, um, he finally concluded something that Yui was lying. Kasi ang suspecha niya rito, nagsisinungaling itong si Yui sa kanila. Wow. After all that immersion. Hmm. Yeah. It's quite convincing. Her, his um his uh deduction of of Yui. Overall, it's a really good episode. All right. It's a really good episode. Uh base. Well, you well if you're not If you're not that much into either mystery or detective animes or even crime animes, don't watch this anime. You'll, you will be, you, you'll just, um, you'll just bore yourself to death. Okay, and I'm not placing the fault on the anime. I'm placing the fault on you as the viewer, right? Because the pacing in this particular episode, yeah, it is slow enough. Yeah. It's slow enough for a mystery anime, for a detective anime, or even for a crime anime. Because this pacing is um, the pacing of this episode. If you make it too fast, yeah, viewers of um, well, long time viewers of. Uh, Detective, mystery, and crime animes will lose interest because important is the build up ng kaso all along all along the episode. Hey, important yon. So if you make it this slow, yep. Ay, hindi pa yan ang rating ko. Ay, hindi pa yan ang rating ko. You'll make it. Uh, yeah, the pacing is just right. Nagang it's fit for. It's fit for this kind of storyline. Kasi nga, detective nga sila eh. 
right? They solve crimes. They solve cases. Yeah, you really, you really need to make the viewer understand what um, the main protagonists are going through just to solve this case, right? And mukhang may breakthrough na nga eh. May breakthrough na lang. May breakthrough na lang nakita si, uh, si Kimi. May breakthrough na lang siyang nakita. Eh, well, the pacing just made me realize that. Right? Flow naman. Well, first gear shift here was, um, was when Nagisa, um, from out of the blue, just declared herself as the legendary detective. But Kimi knew she was just posing as one. I don't know what, well, probably, uh, probably it's because of her, probably it's memory transference, kasi we all know, nasa kanya ngayon ang puso ni ano eh, ang puso ni Siesta, nasa kanya na ngayon eh, so I think she is taking cues from that, alright, she's taking cues from that. So second gear shift is when um is when Yui and Kimi had that con- long conversation in their in uh in her house's private museum, All right? And I think well, I think Kimi has as as um I think Kimi's idea of Yui lying started there. All right, say, parang you can tell by you can tell actually by her by Yui's line of questioning na parang sunod sunod eh sunod sunod yung questions niya without Kimi without giving Kimi the chance to answer each and every one of them. All right. So Kimi, what Kimi did there was um throw back, throw uh throw another question back, right? So I think dun 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 yata nagkumpisang maghala, ah uh, dun yata nagkumpisang suspecha ni Kimi na nagsisino ng aling ang batang to, right? Final gear shift came when. When she, when Kimi took Yui's hand and helped her up, man, you know, there are lots of, I think there are, there are a plethora of ways um, to use is if a person, uh, there are a lot of plethora of ways to tell if a person is lying. I think that's uh, that's Kimi's way of. Confirming his suspicions. Touch. All right. So, mohang yan, mohang na confirm na niya na nagsisiyon ng ling ang batang to sa kanila. All right. So, these three gear shifts that I saw, uh, especially the first one, will play a role in future episodes. All right. Will play a role in future episodes. Plot-wise, mm, yeah, Malines, right? Because well, um, it's the first case that um, Nagisa and well, that Kimi. It's the it's the first case Kimi will handle with another person. With another per- with a person besides Siesta. Yeah, it'll be his very first case na may kasama siyang na may kasama na siya since siesta and that's Nagisa alright and well doon talaga nakafocus yung bonding nila as a team as a, as, a, as, a part, as a detective partnership and of course the case at hand yeah right hindi ka pwedeng magsingit ng kahit na anong side story here or even a sleeper moment no you can't afford sleeper moments here because it is a mystery anime you have to keep you know, the animators have to keep the audience glued to the episode at hand kasi mukhang yeah 
Mohan, this is a this is a really strange case. So much as it's going to spill over to the next episode. Bini din tayo, di ba? So it will spill over to the next episode. So yeah, malinis ang plot, right? Because yeah, talagang na focus talaga ng attention ko sa sa kaso nito, right? So kasi I would figure na bakit ganito pala din line ng questioning ng batang to y- hindi niya binibigyan ng chance si Kimi na sagutin sagutin ang bawat isa she's not even pausing and waiting for waiting for Kimi to answer right ito palang yeah magkakasuspecha ka eh ito palang magkakasuspecha ka na and wow right This is what a uh, this is what a um, oh, this is a detective anime in its purest form, right? It's not well, it's not um, it's not advanced like Moriarty the Patriot. It's not as complicated. It's not as complicated as Odd Taxi. Um, oh, it doesn't have and it doesn't have Lupin the Third's brand of funniness, right? Pero For this particular episode, yeah, it's a really good one. Pace, flow, and plot, they were almost, I almost did not distinguish one from the other. Ganong kaganda ang episode nito. So, The Detective is Already Dead, episode 3. Boys and Nancy Drew Mysteries, yeah, you remember that show? That was during the late 70s, right? I also watched that show sometimes. I also watched that show sometimes, especially yung, yung time na, yung time na Hardy Boys pa, yeah, sila, yung Leaf Cassidy and Parker Stevenson, yeah, galing na dun. And, uh, and, you know, that show also inspired me to read the Hardy Boys books, I I've read I've read probably two or three of them because it's a lot of them, huh? A lot, a lot of books on Hardy Boys. Okay. So wow, right? You know, every thinking anime fan loves a good detective story, right? I don't know if um I don't know if the current generation loves detective stories because well. Their attention spans are 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 disappointingly um, disappointingly short. Right? I'm not saying this to destroy them. It's a fact. Okay, it's a fact. So well, if they watch this anime, yeah, they'll get bored out of their minds. So again, the detective is already dead. Episode three. But yeah, deserves the rating. So, title of the next episode has been teasered. Hmm. I'm not gonna base my motivation on that. I'm going to base my motivation on the final scene of this one, of this episode. Yeah. Tutukan natin yan, mga lifestyle. We're gonna watch that, and you and I are going to deep dive into that. All right. In the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest.
Whoa! Whoa! Alright! Uh, Nakonfirm na natin ang pangalan ng kalaban. The Andromeda Stellaration. Yan. Kasi uh, sa, sa manga kasi ng Ghetto Robo Art, medyo mahaba. Okay? So, yung una nating yung una nating minention dito in the in, while we were reviewing this this anime. Alright? So, their prime objective talaga is to, well, is to save our galaxy from Geta Rays. Right? And uh, definitely, definitely they are going to destroy the planet. Right? What? Walang unang dispatch yung mga dito. Right? At medyo nilang paso ng kalaban. So, ang ginawa ni Jean, uh, ni Rico sila, nag like Operation Peacock. So, Operation Peacock pala, wow! Okay? What a way to to decimate to decimate the enemy. Naglabas sa maraming kanyo na ganun. Missile launcher. Grabe ang dami. So, they launched all of them. Di, nangalahati ang kalaban. Nangalahati ang numbers nila. Then, at, at the same, and at, uh, and on command, kinum, oh, kinuman ni Jin na ilonslang Getter Art. Silang tatlo. So, yeah, they were... Uh, they were actually maneuvering through this through this concentrated fire with ease. Kaya nang uh, andali sa kanila, andali sa kanila ng tatlo. And they were finally able to combine the together arc. Yung pinakauna, okay, yung um, the lead, kung baga, lead off, the lead off mecha. Okay, ang gulang nga ng general eh. And in one, and it took only about three seconds for them to to completely. Um, to well to to kill this general eh kasi laki ng kasi laki ni Getter Arc eh so kung mag consider enemy enemy mecha ito it only took Getter Arc 3 seconds to to kill it ganun nga bilis chinap chap right chinap chap na parang na parang ano lang eh ginawang tawag dito um uh, ginawang sisig <laughs> Ginawa sisig. Nag nagbukas sisig ang kalaban. Right? That's how wow. Alright? This This uh this version of Getter, yeah, it is scary. It is scary. Talagang nakakatakot ang kapangyarihan nito. Talagang um we can now say that this is Getter Robo's version of Mazin Kaiser. Ganong kalakas to. Pero Final scene. Um, the Andromeda Stellaration finally shows its um, its face. Kinumpul kumpul yung mga natitirang forces nila in such a way na ipakikita nila ang mukha ng kanilang pin yung pinaka leader nila. And what? Um, tako mas tako mas suddenly snaps na mukha niya. Ito ang pumatay sa nanay niya. So bigla siya sumugod kasi siyang whoever whoever is the lead off unit dun sa uh whoever is the lead off unit siya na talaga ang so, in sole control ng buong mecha ng Getter. Eh at that time si Takuma. So wala magawa sila Kamui at si Baho. So basta lang wow. We, we can see na nabalo sa galit si Takuma rito. Talaga sinugod niya. And that's when the episode ended. Wow! Binitin pa tayo. <laughs> Alright. Binitin pa tayo. <sighs> Overall, it's a fucking good episode. Woo! Grabe! You know, when it comes to violence, Gona Guy is no stranger. Look! That's why he's called the Godfather of Mecha. Nobody does mecha animes better than him. Alright? And I don't care what you other mecha, mecha anime fans would say. For me, Gona Guy is the god of mecha. And Get the Robo Art is proof of that. Pace. What? Siyempre, fast pace. Bak, bak ang umating ka boy. It's, it's a battle scene. Alright? It's a battle scene. 
Pero, um, the episode started with Takoma's memories of um, practically his mother's final moments. At talagang namukhaan niya ng mabuti ang nagpapatay sa nanay niya. Talagang, uh, talagang, talagang nakaukit na sa utak niya yun. He would not forget that face. Kaya nung, uh, nung pinakita na ng Andromeda Stellaration yung mukha ng leader nila, ayun, natural, mababaliw sa galit ang tao. Right? The pacing will make you realize that. And you would, you would actually feel sorry for Takuma here. Because, he was the sole witness to, mother, to his mother's death. Okay? Siya mismo nakakita. At siya, siya rin mismo nakakita kung sino, kung sino ka nagpapatay. Alright? And, uh, siguro, siguro, a few hours later, he meets Baku. Ayun, doon sila, do sila nagkakilala ni Baku. Okay? Now, it may be a long backstory for you. Okay? To those who have, um, to those who have already seen the episode, it may be a long backstory for you, but no, the pacing requires this kind of a backstory. All right, it requires this kind of a backstory. Um, the animators, kasi collab to eh, collab, collab ito ng tatlong animation studio eh, so and dami. All right, um, the animators really made us understand, um pinagmumulan ng galit ni Takuma. This one, this incident na pinatay ang nanay niya. Right? He, does, he doesn't miss his father that much. Okay? Because he's yet he was he grew up without a father. Right? Ryoma was Ryoma is in space. All right? But he left but he left a son. He left a wife and son. Pero I think hindi alam ni Ryoma na na may, na may anak siya. Na may anak, na may anak siya si Takuma. So yeah, Takuma did not grow up without a fa- did not grow up with a father. Kaya he doesn't miss him that much. Pero itong yung pagkakapatay sa nanay niya, yan. <laughs> he will never forget that for as long as he lives. Right? And he's immortal. <laughs> he's immortal. He's unkillable. Okay? So, yeah, believe it or not, the pacing of this episode made me realize all of that. Right? Flow naman. Well, first gear shift is um, probably the moment when, um, when the killer actually found him na nagtatago doon sa parang basement. Right? Bata pa siya noon. But he was he was able to escape. Ayun. Pinapapatay din siya nun. Pinapapatay din siya nun. So if it weren't for that um that gear shift, we probably wouldn't have get a robo arc right now. Alright? Second gear shift is when well no uh when Jin gave Takuma his father's old helmet. Yung helmet ng ta- yung helmet ni Ryoma na na, ginagam- na ginagamit ni Ryoma noon during those days. All right. So binibigay binigay ni Jin. Sabi niya, "Oh, Takuma, suot mo 'to." So, yun nakita ni Jin. Kamo ko, sabi niya, "You are the spitting image of your old man." <laughs> right? Kamo. Kasi uh, nakita niya when so so ni tao may helmet eh. Naalala niya yung ano, naalala niya si Ryoma. Right? So sabi niya, don't get humiliated out there. Eh, hindi mo maintindihan ni Ryoma sin- ni ni tao mga sinabi nito. So, narinig ni Kamui. Pin- Ipinaintindi ni Kamui kay tao ma that when that when Commander Jin says the words humiliate to them, ib- isa na ibig sabihin noon. Don't die on me. <laughs> Don't die on me. Ganun lang yun. Alright? So, yeah. And, um, talagang, um, fan service moment. 
There's a fan service moment there. Kasi, ibinigay nga ni, ni Jin kay Takuma yung, hel- yung helmet ni Ryoma. So, ganun talaga yung tura nun. Ganun kasimple. Ganun kasimple yung, ang helmet nun. So, final gear shift is when, ayun nga, um, that voice from the uh, from the Andromeda Stellar Ration announced that yun ang name ng yun ang name ng empire nila and they are here to save the to save the galaxy from get a race even if it means destroying the earth nag converge pina, yun pinakita yung mukha ng leader nila hmm tao ma suddenly snaps All right Ganong kalalim na ang galit ni Takuma sa taong to. Now, I, I think we can safely assume that um, his mother's killer is probably the leader of the Andromeda Stellaration. Kaya, wow. Right? Wow! These three gear shifts I saw in this episode, yep, guaranteed, ginagarantee ko sa inyo, will play a role in future episodes. Especially the final gear shift. Takuma would love to get his hands on the leader. Right? He would he's going to enjoy taking his damn head off. Right? He's going to enjoy taking that leader's head off. Alright. Alam nyo, I'll, I'll explain later, alright? Plot muna. Now Malines. Right? Malines. Because, what? Well, in explain na nila ang backstory, right? Then on to the battle scene, okay, the um, the core of this episode, which is which is the most important, right? So, pinakita nila ang backstory para maintindihan natin ang magiging final scene nun. All right, especially for those who have um who are not familiar, who have who have just started watching Get a Robo Art. Dito sa episode na to. Alright? And, another reason why I called it malinis. I called it, I called the plot clean. Because, talagang, talagang, after the backstory, talagang ipinocus na. Talagang, i- ipinakita na sa audience that there's a, there's an invasion going on. At ang unang target ay ang Get Ray Research Institute. Right, the or also, also known as the Sotome Lab, the Sotome Laboratory. Pinangalan ni Professor Sotome. Okay? Grabe. Right. The plot was so clean. You even um uh, even rookie even rookie anime fans will will get the point. We'll get the point of this episode. Right? So pace, flow and plot. Yep. They all came together in this episode. Uh, I, and I, I told you guys, it's a fucking good one. Wow. So, Get a Robo Arc, Episode 3. You know, what is hip. Gandang episode day. Oh, two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. You know, this particular episode has gonna guy written all over it right sik sik lig lig ang violence sa episode na to right now um well i haven't seen the mazinger z manga yet eh, any pages of it eh. but i i but i have heard that um gonna guys gonna guys uh the manga forms of gonna guys characters yan they're all they're all violent. Okay? The Mazinger Z manga daw was really violent. Medyo sanitized ng araw nung ginawang anime. Eh. Right? Kasi, um, that's that is why we should not compare mangas to animes. Right? Animes have a lot have a lot of legal impediments to deal with. Mangas, nope. There aren't almost there aren't any. All right? And besides, these are two different sets of storytelling rules. All right? 
and and most of you okay especially those who are watching that that still compare mangas to animes all right i'm talking to you right now and most of you don't get the fucking point all right bukod pa sa dalawang magkaibang patakaran ng storytelling ang ikinukumpara nyo sa isa't isa. There, there are also legalities involved. Right? Animes, lalo na. Ang daming, ang daming legal impediments na dapat i-hurdle dyan. Right? Mangas don't have much restrictions eh. Right? Uh, if there is, they're not as strict as the ones for animes. Alright? Kaya, well, if you have lived longer than me, if you're an anime fan longer than me, you would, um, you would have, you would probably have seen pages of the Mazinger Z manga. Right? If you have, comment below. Alright? Comment below and give me the link. To the to the page you to the page you saw, right? But this particular episode has gone a guy written all over it, right? In terms of the violence, these the violence the the violence the mechas can deliver, talaga brutal. <laughs> talaga na awa pang ako sa kalab sa kalabang general eh, nung nung tinad tajan yan eh, nung ginawa sa sisig ni Gator Arc. Eh. Naawa pa ako sa kalaban. Wow. All right? Naawa pa ako sa kalaban dito. All right? So this confirms my um well this this affirms what I what I said uh, a while ago and in the previous review that this version of Get a Robo is Get a Robo's is this anime's version of Mazing Kaiser? All right, I'm I'm sure some of you have seen Mazing Kaiser already. Yeah, it's Mazing it's Mazinger Z's most brutal form, All right? And it was it was also created by 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 um, Koji's grandfather, yung tatay ni tatay ni ni Doctor Kenzo Kabuto, who in turn is the creator of Great Mazinger. Right, I, I know that. I love the Moss Inverse. Okay, I'm still a fan of Mazinger Z. Right, well, I'm actually a fan of Gona Guy's works. Okay, the Godfather of Mecha himself. So, if you're an old school and if you're an old school Mecha fan, rejoice because one of the OG Mechas is back. It's definitely back. So again. Get a Robo Arc Episode 3 Two thumbs up Hey, don't compare mangas to anime's type of two thumbs up mga lifestyle So Excuse me Time for the next episode has been teasered Hanggang lang Hanggang lang But I really wanna see how um How how um Takuma's going to snap out of this um wow of this delirious rage he's in or uh, if someone can step in and help him with that right because he's the he's the lead off unit right now eh dun sa getter arc right he needs to he needs to show a little bit of restraint right now so so Abangers natin ang next episode at tutu at panoorin natin yun. Alright guys? So, mga ka-lifestyle. While we're waiting for this anime's next episode, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Alright? Wow! Right? I can't believe I just gave the wow for a romance anime. Okay. But uh, I already did that with Hikihiro. So, uh, I'm quite used to it now. Alright, but anyway. So, well, Alice is... Alice is up to her old sexual harasser. 
ways again, right? She beats the Duke in a uh, in a billiards match, right? So the Duke has the Duke now has to um do whatever Alice says. You know, uh, you know, pusta, you know, pusta dun eh. You know, pustahan nila. So she wants to go into town with the Duke. Yon yun ang request niya. Um, she had uh, she had him make uh, nagpagawa yata si Alice ng special costume para sa Duke in such a way na kung yun meron siya na na bungkong tao hindi yawa matay yon so her perception was um, steel the the costumes the costumes uh, the costumes uh, skeleton should be made out of steel tama yung hinala niya ayon Marami rin, marami nang nakabunggong tao si ang, ang Duke while they were um, while they were treading this town's main street. Yeah, marami na siya nabunggong tao. Well, none of them died. So, hmm. Looks like this curse has a weakness. Mukha na, mukha na, mukha na figure out na ni Alice ang, ang kahinaan ng sumpang ito. It doesn't work on steel. Alright, so check. We got a that's a that's a that's a well that's a small victory for our main protax, right? Well, he, the dude, but the dude doesn't realize it, right? But it I think it's for the first time that the dog is enjoying himself. Right? Kasi first time first time na niya tang uh nakisalamuha sa ibang tao in a long time. Ever since, uh, ever since he got that curse, yeah, it's quite an experience. It's quite, uh, it's quite an enjoyable experience for him. He even got to, um, he even got to play piano in public. Yep, he held a mini concert, and man, pa sa natulong ang bata na well, through that concert, uh, a mother finds her finds her lost son. So yon, may natulong ang pasang tao. That's quite empowering, right? Then, well, um, the Duke invite. Then after the, um, I think the uh, the other day, I think the next day, pala, the Duke invited Alice to um, to see uh, a ten years. Um, a, a a very rare a rare meteor shower with him this meteor shower only occurs every 10 years right so and then now's the time but uh, well nanaig pa rin ang pagiging sexual harasser ni Alice and so um, she even dared the dog to kiss her pero talagang gustuhin man ng dog hindi niya magawa because of the curse. Talagang, talagang nirereklamo na niya openly ang sumpang ito. Even in front of Alice. Alright. Wow. <sighs> and, well, final scene. They were drying themselves off. And, yeah, tinanong, na, tinanong ni Alice kay Duke na, well, Let's just go out there in another 10 years to see that meteor shower. So, sinabi lang Duk sa sarili niya. Will she be there with me after? Will she, will she, will she still be by my side after 10 years? Hmm. Eh, that put a smile on his face, alright? That put the smile on the boy's face. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Overall. It's a fucking, uh, it's a fucking good episode. All right, wow, base, okay, base, palang, yeah, you will be satisfied. Kasi, hindi naman ane, hindi naman siya sobrang bilis as to um, as to wear the viewer out, and it's not even slow enough to uh, to make the viewer sleep. Right, talagang. Kung inantok ka sa episode na to, sinisigurado, 
I am, oh, I am very sure na natangka ng antok mo once the funny moments happened. Alright? You know, Alice has no fear of this curse. Wala siyang, wala siyang bakit talaga. Ganun niya talaga kamahal ang Duke. Like, uh, she really wants to throw herself, throw herself in front of the Duke. And she doesn't care if she dies. Alright? Talagang, ano ne, uh, talagang pag-ibig na. Talagang, it's, uh, uh, it's her love for the Duke that's making, that's making the rules for her right now. Alright? Talagang, uh, even in that scene where uh, she invited the Duke to her room, kasi yun nga, in case na hindi daw siya makatulog, well, um, uh, Natatan siya ng Duke na hubot-hubad. <laughs> And the Duke is just like, put, put, put something on now, please! <laughs> oh my God. I just had to, I just had to set those triggers for you guys because that was a really funny scene. Alright? Pero, um, True to her word, napatulog niya ang duk dito. Nila, tinabihan niya ng scented candle, but before he went to sleep, binigyan niya ng chamomile tea. Hmm. I am proud of that one kasi I'm a, tea, I'm a tea guy myself and chamomile is one of my favorites kasi talagang, talagang gusto kong, kung gusto kong i-relax ang vocal cords ko or if I literally want to Uh, rarely want to get to sleep early. Chamomile tea is my go-to tea. Talagang relate ako sa scene na yun. <laughs> relate ako sa scene na yun. So, the pacing will make you, um, yeah, will make you feel relaxed. And because it's got so many funny, it's got so many funny scenes courtesy of Alice. Okay? Talagang the main instigator of, um, uh, of this uh, of the funny of the funny moments in this episode is Alice and uh, the one that caps the funny moment off is the Duke's reaction <laughs> Whew. grabe now flow first gear shift here is um, is when well is when Alice beats the Duke in a billiards match eh, nakalata ako, mukhang, mukhang rotation pa ang ginamit. Mahirap yun. Alright? It's a really difficult format to, um, you know, to play in. Kasi, ang una ay mong dapat na itira doon, na ipasok yung mga, um, plain colored balls. Okay? Yun ang una dapat. Then, the striped ones. Okay? So, pero susunda mo pa rin dapat yung numbering ng mga bola. You still have to put that into consideration. Kaya, mahirap. Uh, I think mahirap manalo sa rotation. Because, well, I haven't tried not, I haven't tried rotation before. Pero, some say it's, it's difficult to it's difficult to win in a match like this. Alright? Sanay ako sa nine ball. Eh. Okay. Masanay ako sa nine ball. Okay. She actually beats the dope in, in such a match. Kaya nakuha niya yung favor niya. Nakuha niya. Nakuha niya yung gusto niya. Alright. Second gear shift is probably, yeah, the Duke's mini concert. Alright. Talagang, he really came out of the shell at that moment. Talagang, he showcased his piano playing and it was fucking good. Right? Mala, ano eh. Mala, yeah. Mala Elton John. Mala Elton John ang piano playing niya. Reminds me, reminds me a lot of Elton John. Okay. Wow. He was, he was, his piano playing so fucking good. Okay. Talagang, everybody in the town, talagang, talagang dinumog siya. Dinumog siya ng mga tao. And someone even actually jammed with him. Kumuha ng mandolin. Sinabayan siya. Na, you know, Uh, as a fellow, as a um, as a singer, you you get 
when someone jams with you impromptu it means your talent is your talent is appreciated right believe sa yo believe sa yo ang kapa mo musikero kapag nakipag-jam sa yo yun ang ibig sabihin nun right so it's it's a very empowering gear shift now final gear shift is when um Alice was um somewhat successful in in the do not seeing that meteor shower because he was busy rescuing her eh sinabi ni Alice ay nako kumagat na naman sa patibong ko tapos bigla niyang bigla niyang tinaob yung bangka all right so it means na well, I think Alice has shown a little bit of frustration there kasi she can't even touch the duke, the man she loves. Alright? Hindi niya ma-express ng maigi yung pag-ibig niya sa duke. And so, the, the sexual harassment is all is all that she can do. Ang gandun lang siya talaga. Unless the curse, unless the curse is lifted, wala. Ang ganto na lang siya. Uh, you can, you can also, you can also feel sorry for Alice here, right? Not just the dog, but also for Alice. Yeah, that gear shift made me realize that. So, these three gear shifts, all right, especially um, the second one. Yeah, the dog's mini concert. Yeah, that will play a role in future episodes because. I think the Duke needs to um, needs to not let this curse control his life, right? And that uh, and that gear shift may may start something in him. It may start something in him. It will it will make the Duke not fear the curse, not fear the curse as often as he is now, and just. Enjoy life. Enjoy life. Enjoy life on his own terms, actually. Okay. Plot-wise. Hmm. Malinis. Kasi, um, the animators let us focus on these two alone while they were traversing this town on its um, fiesta. Alright. Kasi, well, No one can recognize the Duke in his costume kasi mukhang talagang wala eh. Kasi talagang nakatake pa mukha niya eh. And he's totally encased in a, in a steel in a steel skeleton. Right? So, kahit anong bunggo sa kanya ng tao o hayop, no, no one died. Okay? No one died. So, I tell you guys, Alice I think Alice has found a breakthrough in this curse. I think she has found, yeah, yeah. We can safely say now that Alice has found a weakness in this curse. May, may sablay ang sumpang ito. May sablay, may sablay ang sumpang ito. And well, I think Alice has figured that out. I think Alice has figured that out. So yeah. Kung hindi ganito kalinis ang plot, we wouldn't realize that as well. We wouldn't realize that. And of course, um, the plot made us feel happy for the Duke kasi ngayon na siya nakalabas in a very long time. Ever since the curse was placed, the curse was put on him. Right? So yeah. This is a breakthrough, right? In, in the Duke's personal life. This is a breakthrough. And we can all thank Alice for that. We can all thank Alice for that. Yeah. Ganong kalinis ang plot ng episode na to. So, well, another great episode from this anime. Talagang, wow. Nat- natawa na naman talaga ako. Grabe. And, um, It had some empowering scenes, right? You you could you could really see that you could really cheer the dog on, 
right? especially that mini concert all right especially that mini concert so the talk of death and is made episode three That was a hard mic drop. <laughs> you know, um, JC staff is over delivering on his enemy in terms of the funny, in terms of the funny moments. Yep, they don't. They're not. They're not. They're not short. They're not short changing these scenes. Because uh, if you would deep dive, okay, let's deep dive into Alice's mindset. Alice's mindset right now because you can yeah you can somewhat tell that Alice is also frustrated it's not just the Duke but also Alice because um, she would love serving the Duke all her life and well and she loves him pero hindi niya mai express ng mabuti hindi niya may express ng maayos because of that curse right and all she can do right now is to sexually harass him right you know um, I think it's uh, I think it's getting frustrating I think it's getting really frustrating now for both of them this curse right talagang evident na talaga sa do right when it, on the side of the dog, yeah, it's really evident that he's getting that he's getting so frustrated with this curse because well, the feeling is mutual. He, mahal din niya si Alice. Hindi naman niya ma-express ng mabuti. Hindi niya maakitan ng ligaw ng mabuti si Alice because of this curse. Yeah. Witches are bitches. Witches are bitches. But um, if you look at it from from our side as anime fans, yeah, you would feel you would feel sorry for both these for both the main for both main products. Alright. But if it, if it weren't for that curse, there wouldn't be any funny scenes. There wouldn't be any funny scenes. So yeah, the storyline is uh, yeah has grave complications, but the way they deliver it, yeah, it looks funny. It really looks funny. Yeah, three episodes in, you wouldn't mind recommending this anime to um to other uh, to other anime fans or even to total uh, total normies about anime. So again. The Dog of Death and His Mate, Episode 3. Makalimutan. So, the title of the next episode has been Desert. <laughs> In riddles again. So, don't trust it. We should do, we should do our SOP for this one. Wait for next week and watch that episode. Mali natin. Baka ma deep dive natin just like this one. You can never tell. In the meantime, mga lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Right? I'm sure. I'm sure you'll enjoy the rest. <laughs>